Overcome every opposition, what you said and broke with no pops business, not the mission. Everybody got it gonna claim it. That we the opposition, judge my position, you're not conditioned, you're not nation, it's not division of the seed, bro, pay the seed risk, got your back on track, take the seed drip, big drip, they tryna poison my people. Remember that stable with the eagle, build on secrets that's illegal, pay this in a way to treat you. Everybody's a demon for real. Who's saying it's to act like you kill? Understand they don't want you to feel. Understand they don't want you to heal. Sick and tired of taking these L's. Boy, hold on to your soul for the sales. It's right here, was a name and excel. Most high, just for the whole world to wake up. Can't do with the truth to shake up. King done with the drip that you cake up. Big drip, just from the world with a demon. That's gonna bring the whole team in. Got squad gonna bring the whole team in. Big drip, I'ma go to war with a demon. That's gonna build a whole team in. Got squad gonna bring the whole team in. They don't wanna know the truth. 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 All these weapons form against me. All these weapons form against me. All these weapons form against me. No weapon form against me. See, I'm locked and I'm loaded. They don't wanna see us win. All right, booty really noted. All I think is golden. No man could hold him. Media could scold them, all lies they showed them. Guess why? Now that I'm back on my horse, now that I'm back in my course, they should have date for the force. How could you question the source? Let's be the name of the force. We in the way of sports. Hit when you hop on the porch. Ain't no fair game in the sport. Entity coming on source. I know. The things they don't want me to tell you. Watch for the things that they sell you. Trying the best to derail you. Kingdom is here to prevail you. I know. The things they don't want me to say, like sending our people away from the land that we own, I'm here to address it today. They don't wanna know the truth. 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 Y'all, it's time to wake up. It's time to know what's really going on. That's the problem, y'all too comfortable here. It's time to go back, go back home. We are the lions. We are the right sword. Yeah, we can move everything. It's time to start thinking about Jerusalem. Zion, our home. Yeah, you're not an African American. You just like out. We are the key to this. We got the key to world peace. They don't want to know the truth. They don't want to know the truth. What's up? What's up, man? What's going on, man? How y'all feeling on this blissful Tuesday? I hope y'all got some sleep. I know niggas was still popping fireworks all through the motherfucking night, nigga. I know. And if you in one of the major cities, oh, I feel for y'all. I know them niggas was lighting it the fuck up. I don't know what the fuck these motherfuckers got by me. But I know they ain't even before the little shit with the firework band and, you know, stipulation. Hey, nigga, ain't no shit sounding like that. I don't know who making them homemade fireworks. Hey, but y'all niggas is putting too much motherfucking dynamite up in that motherfucker, boy. Them bitches sound like some Call of Duty shit. But shout out one time, man. Let me uh get up in this chat real quick, man. Shout out to Darius Matthew, Big Dog, Philly OG, The Roots, The 111 Street, man. Shout out to my big bro, man. Latifah Miller, man. Salute to the goddess. Fishing with Camel Joe, man. Salute to the relative, man. My sister Lyrical Neville was up in this motherfucker. Shout out to 504, man. We in this bitch. DBPA, man. Salute to my bro, Mike. Mike, always dropping shit up in here, man. Salute to the guy. My boy, Real Lives TV, man. Nigga, warrior energy all the way, man. Salute to the guy, man. You feel me? Uh, Godric, uh, I can't pronounce your last name, but man, salute to Godfrey, man. Salute to the family, man. You feel me? Um, who else we got up in here? 
Dominique Devashan, uh, man, salute to the goddess. Uh, Mikio Butler, man, much respect, family, man. Shout out to the bro Chris Chris Jackson up in here, man. Let me get back down to the bottom, man, get to the next soul so we can get to it, man. Shout out to uh, uh, Ramani Bay, man, Islam to the brother, man. Shout out to my bro Tashan Shannon, man. Salute to all the relatives, man. So we get into another soul real quick, man. And then we gonna get into the information, man. Uh, uh, the plight of this series, and like I told people after I got done with the uh, the whole West Coast shit and everything, that I was gonna start getting into all this whole Pan African shit to show you that no disrespect, no disrespect intended. I hope no one take this disrespect, but the facts is the facts. Majority of every nigga that came to the mainland with that back to Africa shit are non-mainland niggas with a few mainland niggas adjoining themselves with them. I mean, no disrespect when I say that, but the facts is the facts. And I know that don't equate to where these people is from, that the mass majority of these people feel the same way. You feel me? Because at the end of the day, the Americas is the Americas to me. And we all have been manipulated, including them. But the facts of the matter when it comes to this mainland nigga shit, majority of all the pan-Africanists that's been coming with that shit has been foreign niggas. Not foreign in a sense is like overseas, but none of these motherfuckers rooted from the mainland shores. Even though we all went through same colonization, different shit, different geographic locations, different understanding. So we're going to get into this, man. Shout out to Rodney Gilmore, man. Shout out to Chief Test Sun Owl in the building, man. Salute to the goddess, man. You feel me? Uh, excuse me. Uh, let me see. Someone else popped up in here too, man. Shout out to Mommy Chula and Immortal Amaria, man. Salute to the relatives, man. So uh, I'm, I'm going to get into one more song real quick, man. And then we're going to get uh, right into this because we got to start showing who the fuck these people really is and what type of agenda they coming with. And we got to stop being fucking followers as a people. You know, uh, we can't go nowhere else and tell them how they should think and how they should run their shit, even if we are supposed to be family. But you're constantly seeing motherfuckers coming from every geographic location, coming trying to tell us how the fuck we should think and what our understanding should be. Man, Halito to uh, Kia Warren, man. Salute to the relative. Shout out to Beast Mode, too. So we're going to deal with this shit. And uh, we're going to deal with it uh, respectfully. You feel me? No disrespect. No none of that shit. I'm not even that type of dude. You feel me? Motherfuckers know how I get down. So uh let me get my bro. Let me get some of my bro up in this motherfucker. I need some Trey Ali in this motherfucker. Let's get to it. Man, shout out to Chicka Hummy Roots, man. Salute to the goddess, man. Salute to my sus, man. Hey man, all I'm saying is nigga, you always got something to say. Don't know the truth. How the hell you close to God? We all know it's you. Yo, how the 
that's supposed to survive, he don't know the shoe. He should have died, you let him slide, cause he look just like you. I tried to tell them all skin, they can. Everybody ain't your partner, everybody ain't your friend. How they thought they supposed to help when they the ones that put you in. They don't struggle how we struggle, they can't get it how we live. Can't be scared to die when we already dead. Even what your life is like, no matter how you play it. But I ain't accept it, we should choose the main guy. My love on these motherfucking bodies. If a truck that circles like a motherfucking eye. Chill some, move some, chill some, move some. Chill some, move some, chill some, move some. Hey, my nigga banging on these motherfucking boners. Hey, what's up, what's up, man? Shout out to my bro Trey Ali with that fire ass motherfucking banger on the motherfucking screen, man. Hey, man, shout out to Rashawn in the building. Shout out to Root Words. Root Word, you been on the motherfucking rap page, bro. Hey, salute the Root, man. Hey, shout out to A Dot. A dot uh ver uh a dot v dot in the building, man. Salute to the guy, man. Let me see who else popped up in this motherfucker, man. Uh I'm thinking we about all caught up. Oh, shout out to the brother Wisdom Seeker in the building, man. And shout out to the bro Chief Peanut Know you in the building, man. Salute to the guys, man. Um, so I think we about caught up. So I'm gonna play one more song, man. And we're gonna get right into it, man. Like I say, man, I don't mean no disrespect with none of this shit, man, but I'm starting. I want to listen to shit and I just start. You know how you do the, the first wiki link first to get the broad base and then you start searching for like scholarly work on certain subjects and shit like that. And that's how you're supposed to transition from there and shit. So you start getting to the meat and shit instead of eating gristle. Wiki, wiki, Wikipedia and shit is the gristle to lead you to the meat. You feel me? If you do diligent with your research. But as I was just on the Wikipedia about Pan-Africanism and shit, and I'm clicking on each one of these names of these people that's tied in with these people. I'm just starting to notice. I'm like, God damn. I don't see a, a, a goddamn state by none of these niggas' birth rates. What state was this nigga born in? How the fuck you going to come try to tell us how to motherfucking run our lives and what we should be focusing on? And you ain't back home doing the same shit because clearly the same shit is going on back home. So, you know, I feel like before a motherfucker come tell somebody else something, they got to clean up their own shit. But niggas been trying to clean up their shit based off of our struggles and shit. And I'm not feeling that shit. So, uh, let me get one more song up in here, man. Then we're going to get at it. Uh, I'm trying not to use no regular songs because I'm tired of them niggas and shit flagging my shit. Shooters on my roof, lawyers in the coat, 
We can never die. This we bulletproof. Just, 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 message to the black man. Just, just, message to the black man. You was a slave, you was prisoners of war. It's not wasting your time, these other bitches ain't important. You ain't meditating, you ain't meeting with the sauce. Like, what the fuck's a noodle flame painted with the sauce? I find it hard to trust the pastor who the signs of the master who preaching we should submit while getting murdered and captured about how we should wait on God. It's never our vernacular. They get paid and praised by the dollar long guess they keeping us stagnant. And, <laughs> and niggas think they woke, huh? Like you can change the whole world through a boat, huh? Like slave masters wanna let their slave go, huh? That slave master was probably your can folk, huh? History in reverse, a black king strategy, when blacks for your majesty, they always had your pyramids, but point to where the cast would be, aristocracies with your last name had naturally. Yeah, and I didn't even tell half the shit, but I didn't even tell a quarter of the shit. I oh, know, bro. I'm just getting started. We witch. Yeah, I think it's right about a busting guns and all this weird shit. I'm not to get my people in, nigga. And I'm with you, brody. Man, once again, man, shout out to the brother, man. Trey Ali, man. Firebanger, man. Real shit, man. We ain't even told an A for the story, man. Not even an A. So it's time to get it, man. And that's why I keep telling people, man, you know, like the matriarchs been saying this shit for years. I've been hearing other brothers been saying this shit for years. So ain't like, you know, I don't want to say it like it's just something exclusively. I'll say like, nah, man, it's a lot of people say that, but I say it too because it needs to be reinforced. Genealogy is very important. And getting down there to see the actual records is the best next step after that online genealogy and shit, man. Uh, bear with me one second. Let me just do something. Just do something real quick. Uh, do something real quick, y'all. Know I need to get this shit lined up so we can be interacting with each other up in here. All right, all righty, all righty. Got that. Got that. All right. First and foremost, man, shout out to the gods and the goddesses of this dominion that's been granted to us by the almighty creator. You feel me? Like I always say, man, hold your head up high like the god you is. Get your head up out the motherfucking rabbit holes and shit. Don't let them motherfucking keep you looking down, looking right, right before you and shit. And keep your shit stable and shit, man. Uh, shout out to my bro, Aboriginal Power, man. Salute to the gods. Shout out to 504 Indigenous Warrior in the building. Shout out to Gretchen Ham, uh, Ladisria Alexander, man. Salute to the goddesses, man. Salute to Ray Learn, man. Salute to God. Janet, the Nubian Queen, man. Salute to the goddess, man. You feel me? Uh, India in the building, man. Salute to the goddess, man. Salute, salute, salute. Uh, just trying to make sure I don't miss nobody, man. Um, we gonna go ahead and get into it, man. We gonna start breaking this shit down piece by piece, uh, person by person. We going for the head of the snake, not the goddamn tail. We gonna go ahead and get into who these people is, these influential, influential, inf influential people who bought a certain understanding and thought and mind process of intellectual studies and a school of thought to our people and find out who the fuck they is what they really believe and what they understand it and can they even really relate to what the fuck we got going up on over here and what our people was going through at the time and then i'm also going to show this one thing that i ran across uh dealing with uh my study on the motherfucking census and shit going over it record by record it's something very important that i need to show the people and shit too that's going to be off topic of this so that's going to come at the later end of the back end of the show shout out to captain america in the building man salute to the god man uh so um i'm gonna go ahead and as the title say we're starting with marcus garvey today you feel me? Uh, salute to Umar Johnson and shit. We're going to start with Marcus Garvey, but you're going to have me get into that ancestor that you love to brag on, too. See, I ain't want to do my salute, my my response to him because everybody else was doing it. I ain't want to look like I was trying to ride the train. But everything that you stand for, that ancestor you love to hold on to did the exact opposite. 
So we're gonna get into that motherfucker too. But first, this Garvey school and shit. We're gonna get into that, that shit, man. So uh, you know, uh let's go ahead and just get into it, man. I ain't gonna do no more talking. Uh, you know, man, we're gonna just go ahead and just go from here. All right. So what we're gonna start first from is this uh we're gonna start first from um uh, from um uh, this research that was done not only on the eugenics white supremacist but also marcus garvey dealing with virginia all right and uh it was charted at william mary which is a a, a, a replica school uh the college of william mary uh arts and science and, you know, as they say, a uh, strange bedfellow, eugenist, white supremacist, and Marcus Garvey in Virginia, 1922 through 1927. It's a thesis presented to the faculty of the Department of History of the College of William and Mary and partial fulfillment and require a degree of master in arts. All right. And it was it had an approval behind it. So when it went up for peer review amongst these uh, fellow scholars at this school, uh, it had the approval of James McCoy, uh, Leslie Myers, Kimberly Phillips. So they went up over it to see if uh, the narrative that they was painting, did the evidence uh, back up the narrative that they was coming from. All right. All right. So let's get straight from that. Let's get straight from the. Hold on one second. All right, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get back into this. All right, man. Shout out to Auntie in the building, man. Salute to the original Copper Empress Holbert, man. Salute to Auntie. So this the abstract. All right, this study examines the eugenics movement in Virginia in the 1920s. During this time period, eugenics had some of the greatest legislative success in Virginia with the passes of the Racial Integrity Act and Voluntary Sterilization Law. So the Racial Inter uh, Integrity Act uh, classified all non-whites as Negro and the volunteer uh, sterilization law gave them the right to uh, sterilize uh, male, male, but mostly females that they doomed uh, um, incompetent, you know, uh, at the lesser realm of, um, uh, of the totem pole and shit. Both of these statues had considerable effects on poor and non-white Virginians and lasted well into the 1960s. Yet Virginia was also the site of one of the greatest failures of the eugenics movement. The three leading uh, Virgi uh, Virginia eugenists, John Powell, uh, Walter Plecker, and Ernest Cox, failed to ignite a national movement or to incite other states to pass similar legislation, despite the implications and contemporary importance of Virginia eugenics law. All right. Hold on, my bad. In addition to filling the gaps in the scholarship of the Virginia eugenics movement, this thesis will also integrate the unlikely alliance the Virginia eugenics formed with Marcus Garvey. As the importance of both of the Virginia eugenics movement and Garvey back to Africa movement began to warn, Garvey, Powell, Plecker, and Cox found common ground in a strong belief in the prim uh, primacy of racial uh, incisionalism. All right. And as we go over this, we're going to get into more literature to see if these claims that this person was claiming. Uh, can we back this shit up? All right. In 1920s, Virginia was uh, image in debate over various legislation measures involving racial purity. In 1924, the Virginia General, uh, General Assembly passed two nationality and influential and pro eugenics laws. 
the Controversial Racial Integrity Act was passed March 8, 1924, and was signed by the governor, uh, governor 12 days later. This act strictly banned marriages between whites and anyone with a trace of whatsoever of any blood other than Caucasian. The same uh, secession, uh, the same session of the General Assembly passed another bill legalizing the sterilization of those classified as feeble minded by the standards of time. Prominent Virginia Virginians Trump. Both Virginia's anti uh miscon miscon genetic nation uh mis hey I ain't even gonna try man I don't smoke y'all know what it's y'all see what it say and I'll just blow this up so we can see it a little bit better. All right, yeah, so we can all read it together. Face us sterilization laws as models that should be enacted by other states, particularly when the United States Supreme Court uphold the constitutionality of Virginia sterilization law. With the passage of these acts by 1927, Virginia eugenicists uh, could claim more legislative success than those of any other states. All right. <clears throat> As a result, Virginia eugenists hope to, to come to national prominence. To the uh, consternation of the Virginia eugenists, contemporary national leaders did not grant a great deal of attention to the Virginia Acts. According to some historians, Virginia eugenists did have a great deal of impact internationally, particularly in the formation of eugenics policies in Nazi Germany. All right. Let's, let's get down to the, I want to get down to where... Uh, it starts showing these connections. And we're going to start getting into Marcus Garvey about the role that he played in trying to dupe us. You got to watch these motherfuckers, man. All right, what is shit? All right, all right, all right. Let's start from right here. <clears throat> In many ways, Virginia eugenics put into practice the policy proposal of the national movement and altered the eugenics ideology to fit their own strain of racism and white supremacy. Virginia experienced the 1920s where eugenics is emblematic not only of the growing power of scientific racism and state control product of the policy nationwide, but it is also unique in this context within the Jim Crow South at the time. The most important aspect of the Virginia eugenics movement lies within what the movement failed to do. The Virginia eugenics movement and its leaders, John Powell, Walter Plecker, E.S. Cox, did not succeed in igniting a, a national campaign to enact laws in all 50 states and failed to spread their organization. The Anglo-Saxon clubs of America to any location outside of Virginia. Their most significant failure, however, came in Virginia itself. Despite Insistent lobbying, Powell, Plecker, and Cox were not able to gain support for their bid to extend the reach of the Ra Racial Integrity Act. Significantly, in 1920, the 1924 Act itself did not prove to be foolproof method of ending. Um, oh, my fucking God. Hold on one second. All right, what was I at? Um, this thesis will show the importance. This this thesis will vote will show both the importance and limitation of Virginia eugenics movement in 1920s. It would explain the reason why Virginia eugenics ultimately failed despite their success and why such a failure movement is important within the historical graph of eugenics, social control, and race science. In addition, I will argue that the very unique situation of Virginia, which allowed eugenics to initially flourish, significantly contributed to a decline in popularity of eugenics. 
This study of eugenics rhetoric will uh, illustrate how racist ideology was combined with issues of gender and class, particularly in the South, in or order to create the exclusive definition of whiteness that would exclude non-elite whites. Moreover, through the case study of the Virginia eugenics movement involved with black separatist Marcus Garvey, I will show how such unlikely allies found common ground in their desire for national prominence and, and practical results, as well as in their shared belief in the importance of controlling private activities, marriage, sexuality, in order to secure the future of their respective race and movement. Garvey and the Virginia eugenics came out of context that fostered both the racial extremists and their willingness to work together with each viewed as different or inferior race. Most importantly through the thesis, I will, I will argue that despite its failure, the Virginia eugenics movement is an important historical subject. The experience of the Virginia eugenics demonstrate the potential that exists for the implementation of evasion eugenics policy within the South in the earlier 20th century, as well as the boundaries of eugenics legislation one implemented. It also showed the, uh, the precarious position of Virginia as a state called geographically between the North and the South, ideologically uh, between conservatism, uh, conservatism and progressive uh, progressive progressivism as it encountered mar uh, modernity and the current popularity of race and science. This study is centered on the correspondence of John Powell, Walter Plecker, E.X. Cox, and Marcus Garvey in the 1920s that dealt with the issues of race and misconnection. The Virginia eugenists and Garvey focused their public campaign primarily on the importance of racial purity and the dangers uh, basically mixed day. All right. All right. So I'm going to drop the link to this in the chat. But now I want to start digging into Marcus Garvey. Like, damn, like, what would make this white person write this thesis and shit about a black man and connecting with one of the most racist movements of niggas, the eugenics movement, but not just only the eugenics movement, but the Virginia eugenics movement, which was the most racist one of them all. You feel me? And who are these eugenicists? Who are these people that felt that they was always inferior to us and that, you know, we needed to be separate, including with our own separate place? So now, hold on. Let me copy this real quick. All right, let me copy this. All right. And there go the link to that study right there. Um, the link to that study is right there. And you can go look up over it yourself. And now... I want to get into Garvey. Who is Marcus Garvey? Let me make sure I got all this shit lined up just right where the fuck I want it at. All right. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now we just gonna get into this shit, right? It is just a Wikipedia. All right. Early life. All right. Early life. Y'all still there with me? Hold on one second. This shit is 
Uh, can y'all still hear me? Draw me a one in the chat if y'all can still hear me and shit. Okay, all right, all right, cool. Cause I'm looking at some shit and my shit is tweaking. Um, all right, let's get to it. All right, Marcus Mosiah Garvey was born August 17th. 1887 in Santa Ana Bay, a town in the colony of Jamaica. In the contents of the colonial Jamaican society, which had colorist social hierarchy, Garvey was considered at the lowest end, being a black child who believed he was a full African descent. I like that believe part. You should have known that, right? However, later genetic research nevertheless revealed that he has some Alberian <laughs> accessory. Oh, you don't say, Sway. So you're not even fucking African, nigga. You a fucking European? You black ass European, man. All right. Garvey paternal great grandfather had been born into slavery prior to his abolishing in Jamaica. His surname, which of Irish origin, had been inherited from his family, former slave. Uh oh, all right, you feel me? His mother, Sarah, was a domestic servant and daughter of a peasant farmer. All right, let's talk about his travels abroad. Where did he go? All right. Economic hardships in Jamaica led to growing immigration from the island. In 1910, Garvey traveled to Costa Rica, where her uncle secured them employment as a timekeeper on a banana plantation. Uh, yeah, we don't get no fuck about that. Let's get to right here. All right. He came back to Jamaica in 1914. And there he's there. Um, he saw his article for tourists uh, republished in the, in the Gleaner. He began earning money selling greed and condolence cards, which he had imported from Britain before later switched to selling tombstones. Uh, he also launched the Universal Negro Improvement Association and African Communities League. All right. It's in 1920. It declared his commitment to establishing a brotherhood among the black race to promote a spirit of race pride to reclaim the fallen and to assist in civilizing the backwards tribes of Africa. Initially, it only had a few members. Many Jamaicans were critical of the group's prominent use of the word Negro. So, nigga, you can even get that shit going in Jamaica. Because they didn't like the word Negro. Garvey, however, embraced the term in reference to black people of African descent. All right. All right. Let's get to where he came to the United States. Oh, a year later. Arriving in the United States, Garvey initially logged with a Jamaican aspirate family living in Harlem. You don't say. A largely black area of New York City, he began lecturing in the city, hoping to make a career as a public speaker. Although at first, at his first public speech, he was heckled and fell off the stage. From New York City, he embarked on a U.S. speaking tour crossing 38 states. Now, how the hell do a motherfucker get heckled and thrown off stage? Start a 38 state speaking tour. Hmm. I don't get that. Just don't get that. You don't say. All right. Man, let's just get down to the mid and grid of what this shit that I that caught my attention, right? All right. Let's get down to what caught my attention, right? All right. All right. Now, these niggas are how you talking red, black, and green, and all this other shit. Marcus Garvey this and Marcus Garvey that. But in June 
1922, Garvey met with Edward Young Clark, Imperial Wizard of the, of the Ku Klux Klan from 1915 to 1922. Prior to Clark's, he headed the Atlanta-based Southern Publicity Association. So let's see what he had to say after he left uh, this meeting with this motherfucker. All right. Have this day interview Edward Young Clark, acting Imperial Wizard Knight of the Ku Klux Klan, in conference of two hours in conferences of two are uh, two hours he outlined the aims and objects of the clan he denied any hostility towards the negro improvement association he believed america to be a white man's country and also state that the negro should have a country of his own in africa he has been invited to speak so he invited this man to speak at the unia the, uh, the United Negro, uh, whatever the fuck, association, uh, for coming convention to further assure the race shit, right? All right. So let's see what A. Philip Randolph felt about this shit, right? Let's see what he felt about this shit, right? Oh, yeah. And this right here is coming out of the Library of Congress. It's a video. Let's see what he felt about this shit. Philip Randolph recalls conditions that led hundreds of thousands of Negroes to join the Garvey Parade. They had come out of the war where they had fought and died and come into the southern communities where they met a violent a racial discrimination. Many soldiers were the victims of police brutality. Some were lynched, and therefore there was widespread frustration and discord and discontent among Negroes. Garvey came along with his doctrine of back to Africa, and he painted glowing pictures. Oh, let me hear that again. Among Negroes. Garvey came along with his doctrine of back to Africa, and he painted and discord and discontent among Negroes. Garvey came along with his doctrine of back to Africa, and he painted glowing pictures of what Negroes could do were they to migrate to Africa, how they could build uh, great enterprises and things of that sort. Don't that shit sound real familiar? Don't that? I'm, I'm, hold on, man. Let's listen to that shit again. Glowing pictures of discontent among Negroes. Garvey came along with his doctrine of back to Africa, and he painted glowing pictures of what Negroes could do were they to migrate to Africa, how they don't could build uh, great enterprises and things of that sort. Then somebody else was trying to tell our peoples about great things they can do if they migrated over there and all the great things they can build up for themselves and shit. Don't that shit sound real for me? Didn't we hear somebody else trying to tell our people that shit before this nigga and these other niggas? Let's keep going. And this caught the interest and the uh, imagination of the Negro. And many of them flocked into the Garvey movement. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. You don't say. You don't say. Y'all kind of see where I'm going with this? Y'all kind of see where I'm going with this? I remember reading some shit about somebody else trying to tell us how, you know, since we can't get no equality here, then maybe we should go to Africa and we can build up all these great things. And some people actually believed it. And a lot of them niggas died within 10 years and, the ones that survived, a lot of them wanted to come back and weren't able to come back. And some of them was. And they told about the horrors and tales of this back to Africa shit. But it was a different race of people that was telling us that shit, though. And we're going to show you how all this shit connected right after these 
other uh, informational sources. So let me see where, where I want to go into next, right? Let's go to here, right? See, I could have read the whole, um, I could have read the whole, kept going deep into that article that I uh, that I dropped in the chat for y'all to see. But just on a broad base of what they say, I want to see, did his actions actually line up with the ideology of these racist motherfuckers and how some niggas felt about that shit? So let me pull this up and we're going to go here. All right. This is called the Marcus, the Garvey must go campaign. When Marcus Garvey first arrived in the United States in 1916, he quickly found his way to many of New York's most prominent black radical activists and intellectuals you don't say what what where did he go oh okay well a lot of that pan-african shit the fuck coming up out of man we need to go out there and liberate our brothers from these niggas stronghold and at least briefly garvey enjoyed their support but by 1920 a philip randolph and other black leaders some of whom had supported garvey after his arrival, came to believe that Garvey's program for black advancement was unsound and that Garvey himself was a charlatan. Y'all do know what a charlatan is, right? Though they admired his skill as a pragmatist, these prominent black critics derived Garvey proposed solutions for the problems of African-Americans. They believed that his plan for black progress, including the black star line, and the establishment of a pan-African empire was unrealistic and ill-advised. They considered the Universal Negro Improvement Association, Grandewist titles, and military regalia to be preposterous. And they thought Garvey, with his assumption of regular posture under the title Provisional President of Africa, to be a little more than a self aggrandizing buffoon. A. Philip Randolph, who had introduced Garvey to his first American audience on Harlem Street Corner, said Garvey had success in making the Negro the laughing stock of the world. Federal investigation into his financing of the Black Star, along with blistering analysts of the shipping line by W.E.B. Du Bois, gave fuel to Garvey's Black critics. Randolph personally uh, critiqued the economic feasibility of the Black Star Line and the Messenger, an influential magazine he co-edited co with uh, Chandler Owens, accused Garvey of squandering the hard-earned money of his hard-working poor supporters. You don't say. So all this back to Africa shit, you was using this shit to milk some mainland Negroes in the Northeast. Okay. Black opposition to Garvey and to what came to be known as Garvey Must Go campaign. Supporters of the campaign known collectively as the Friends of Negro Freedom intended to unmask Garvey as a fraud before his black supporters. They also appealed to the federal government to step up investigation. So they had to go tell the government to investigate this nigga. Hmm. You don't say. The Garvey Must Go campaign gained momentum after Garvey held a secret meeting with Edward Young Clark, the leader of the KKK, in June 1922. Hmm. You don't say. Immediately afterwards, Randolph and Owens magazine, entitled Marcus Garvey, the black imperial wizard becomes messenger boy of the white KK uh, Ku Klux Klan. Mm, you don't say. Black leaders was further infuriated when they learned that Garvey, at a speaking engagement in New Orleans, remarks that because black people had not built the railroad system, they should not insist on riding in some cars with white patrons. You don't say. 
So you say my, my, my motherfucking ancestor deserved to go to the back of the fucking bus, huh? That's how your Pan-African felt about you mainland niggas. The messenger vowed to begin a vigorous editorial campaign against Garvey and promised to fire the open gun in a campaign to drive Garvey and Garveyism and all this sense of viciousness from the American soul. Mm, mm, mm. The market, the Garvey must go meetings were violently dispersed by Garvey's followers. A. Philip Randolph received the several hands of a white man in the mail. It was accompanied by a note signed by the KKK. But Rudolph believed that the hand had been sent by the UNIA. Mm. So you reached out to the Klan to help them fight some niggas. You don't say. All right. All right. All right. What we got here, man? What do we got here? Which one is this? One? All right. All right. The Sparks for Social Ju uh, Student Journal for Social Justice by Professor Melissa Wilcox. Separation of Death, 100 Years of White Supremacy and Black Nationalist Alliances in America. So this is talking about 100 years of alliances between pro-blacks and pro-whites. That's been the hidden hand of all the fuck shit that's been going on with our regular black ass. On February 25th, 1962, George Lincoln Rockefeller, founder of the American Nazi Party, and 10 of his stormtroopers arrived at the Chicago International Amphitheater, where 12,000 black Muslims were gathered for a convention organized by the Nation of Islam. Placed in the front row, Rockefeller and his fully uniformed companions sat list and listened as Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad addressed the crowd. Then Rockwell himself was invited to the podium. You knew you know that we call you niggers, he said. But when you rather be confronted by honest white men who tell you to your face what the others are saying behind your back. Despite receiving a mixture of applause and ridicule, Rockwell had the approval of Muhammad. Whom had he had just deemed the Adolf Hitler of the black man. Mm, you don't say. The picture painted here is astonishing. One struggles to imagine two more desperate parties gathering together nonviolently, let alone with smiles and applause. <laughs> Yet what happened in Chicago on that day is not singular. Over the last hundred years, white supremacists and black nationalists have come together repeatedly and often for the same source of reason. This paper is attempt to loosely trace a history of such encounters from Marcus Garvey and the Ku Klux Klan to Grand Dragon Tom Mexer donations to Louis Farrakhan in the NOI. Meanwhile, I will use the writings and speeches of a number of the leaders involved to see if there is an underlying logic to these gatherings. Granted, the history that I attempt to reconstruct here would not be a complete one. Not only would such a task be next to impossible, it would also be tiresome to both the reader and writer. But neither have I been selective, using only examples that support the hypothesis I will put forth. Instead, I have selected three examples because they are the most documented and involve leaders with the most accessible writings and also cover the broadest period of time. What is revealed throughout these examples is that is an underlying logic to these encounters, a logic that is well and sanely logical. In each of the examples, I will highlight both parties share common goals of establishing separate racial pure nat nations and have decided that forming an alliance even with the racial inferior to whom their hate is directed, can quicken the fulfillment of this goal. Damn, son, that's crazy. 
In June of 1922, Marcus Garvey traveled to New to Atlanta to meet the Imperial Clegal Edward Young Clark of the KKK. Garvey had sought to strengthen his Universal Negro Improvement Association, influence in the South, but the Klan widespread power made any inroads difficult to achieve. Realizing the bargaining power he had in the situation, Clark agreed. Clark agreed. Oh, that blow that up. Realizing the bargaining power he had in the situation, Clark agreed to let Garvey to sell and stock a variety of businesses. His organization has started Universal Printing House, Negro Factory Corporation, Black Star Line, under the guarantee that Garvey would work will also work to weaken the organizations like the NAACP that were fighting for civil rights and in integration. Why would Garvey agree to help fight those that were trying to improve the social status of his fellow African Americans? Mm, that is a good question. And why would he motivate Clark to risk undermining the social him? Hold on, my bad. And why would he make the agreement with an organization that robbed, beat, raped, murdered the people he sought to liberate? That is another good question. Likewise, what would motivate Clark to risk undermining the social hemogen his race held in the South Southern states by giving more power to UNIA? From Garvey's account of the meeting, no such account exists from Clark's perspective. The two did little more than mutual reinforcing their similar already held racial ideologies. As Garvey recount, I asked Clark whether he was interpreting the spirit of just a few people who make up his organization or not. And he said, no, we are interpreting the spirit of every true white American. But we are honest enough to say certain things that the others do not care to say. Later in the speech, Garvey described a moment of meeting when he asked how the Klan feel about blacks who wants to be president, followed by the same question as regard as senator of Congress. Once again, what percentage of Americans the opinions of the Klan represent? The question and answer here seemed to be merely for radical effect. After Garvey noted that once again, Clark claimed to speak for all, he states Mr. Clark did not tell me anything new. He told me what I discovered seven years ago. He told me the things that caused me to have organized the Universal Improvement Association. Right. That thing was a deep belief that humans was inherited races. In the second volume of Philosophy and Opinions of Marcus Garvey, first published three years after his meeting with Clark, he writes that racial self-preservation naturally is the first law of nature. What must the Negro do in face of universal attitude, but to align all his forces in the direction of protecting himself from threatened disasters of race domination and ultimately extermination? In America, blacks was both disenfranchised and severely outnumbered. Mm. So you don't say. OK, combined with inherent self-preservation in whites, they could be deceived by whites that dominated society and supported the integration, which would lead to their marginalization and eventually elimination. For Garvey, the solution of the problem, all and all black Africans and all white Americans was the only reason for one, for him under circumstances. Hold on. What? And all black Africa. Okay, I read that wrong. Let me get this back in context. For Gari, the solution to the problem is the solution to the problem is an all black Africa and an all white America. So his solution was to basically give up America and we all go to Africa. Was the only responsible one for him under such circumstances. Which with such largeness, then Garvey admired the KKK for its explicit recognition of incompatibility of races. By joining forces, the two quickened the popularization of America and the subsequent exodus of blacks to motherland Africa. You don't say. You don't say. So read a lot. And we're gonna stop there. So the reason why they was cool with Garvey is because 
he believe in all blacks need to go back to Africa. Right. He also believed that we don't enjoy no rights as an American here because we didn't build none of this shit. So we say. Right. So we say. Which one is this? No. Nope. Which one is this? All right. I just read that one. Which one is this? All right. It's that one. Which one is that one? All right. Now, I want to show something, right? Because this man had all, you know, nice things to say. Um, he had all nice things to say about, you know, uh, these clan members and shit. And we're going to show more of that, too. We're going to show. Matter of fact, let, yeah, let's show more of that. Let's show more of that. All right. Let's show more of that, all right? Let's show more of that. Let's show these nice things he had to say, right? All right. All right. Marcus, Marcus Garvey must go, all right? And after I read this, I'll go to the very top to show what this is about, though. All right. Marcus Garvey, fierce love for his own race, often put him in an unusual position and sometimes led him to agree with some of America's most noted white racists. This in turn caused him to make enemies amongst his own race. Such was the case when Garvey decided to meet with the imperial wizard of the KKK, a white supremacist. On June 25th, 1922, during a speaking tour, Garvey met two hours in Atlanta with Everett Young Clark. During the meeting, which was held at Clark's request, Garvey and Clark each shared their beliefs. Clark and his followers believed the United States belonged to the whites. He explained that the KKK wanted to keep that groups, such as the KKK, representing what white Americans really thought, that whites were superior to all other races. Garvey outraged even some of his own supporters by saying that the KKK and the UNIA were alike in some ways. Mm, you don't say. This is his actual words. The KKK is the invisible government of the United States of America. The KKK expressed the great intent, the feelings of every every white American. The attitude of the U uh, Universal Negro Improvement Association is in a way similar to the KKK. Which the KKK derives to make America absolutely a white country. The UNIA wants to make Africa absolutely a black man's country. So once again, you got somebody else this time, a nigga, trying to tell us to move to fucking Africa. All right. Not to mention, not to mention that this man allowed you to operate in the south with no problems from the kkk right all right let me make sure he said the white race pure meaning it do not believe in intermarriage between races he also tried to convince garvey that the kkk wasn't responsible for many incidents of violence towards blacks that it was accused of Garvey has written several editorials criticizing the KKK, who members had, had threatened and even beaten some UNI organizers in the South. After the meeting, Garvey said he believed. Let me make sure I ain't overlapping. Okay, I, I, I read. I was supposed to say it read from here it go. My bad. He explained that the KKK wanted to keep the white race pure, meaning it did not believe in intermarriage between races. He all, And I read that part. After the meeting, Garvey said he believed that groups such as the KKK represent what white Americans really thought that whites were superior to other races. Garvey outraged with some of his own supporters by saying the KKK and the UIA was alike. The meeting with Clark served to cement and Garvey mind that the belief that blacks would never find equality in the United States. He believed even more firmly now that the UNIA should move forward with plans to create a strong government in Africa for the benefits of black people worldwide. 
You don't say. You don't say. You don't say. Which one was that? Don't say. Let's go here. Now, this same compromised person made statements like this. What do I care about death and the cause of redemption of Africa? I could die anywhere in the cause of liberty. A real man dies once and a coward dies a thousand times before his real death. So we want you to realize that life is not worth it. So except you can live it for some purpose and the noblest purpose for which to live is the emancipation of race and the emancipation of prosperity. God damn, that was some strong ass words. That was some strong ass words. Right. What was I at in this book? The vast majority, let's go back so we can get this shit in context. This is called the Garvey's Revenge. All right. All right. And this page is basically going over a couple of things what some people had thought about Marcus Garvey. But I wanted to go to this page right here. The vast majority of American Garvey Knights he observed wanted to avoid direct struggles with whites and excused this lack of militants on the ground of saving the movement for struggles abroad. Right. So the vast majority of these. So this is supposed to, you know, Garvey supposed to be militant. Right. But the vast majority of these motherfuckers avoided. Direct contact and struggle with these motherfuckers. As a matter of fact, every time motherfucker you see them with these motherfuckers, it's all uh, tea and scrumpets and shit and niggas chilling. Y'all supposed to be some militant ass niggas. I know motherfucking Dr. Kali Muhammad would have never sat down with none of these motherfuckers. All right. Because of harassment by white races in the South, the UNIA chapters in Dixie avoided anything resembling protests and tend to adopt a more conservative line there. Separatism became equated with a reluctance to fight racism. So you want to be a separatist, but don't want to fight racism. All right. Garvey Ice even told their oppressors how much they lied. Hold on. All right. I want to get this up here, right? Garvey Ice even told the impressors how much we like your Jim Crow laws. And that they defend the purity of race. But there was dissent minority who charged that in the North also, African redemption had monopolized the organization to the total neglect of the fight against economic that's uh discrimination and political disenfranchise and forced segregation and other serious manifestation of impressions. So y'all like them Jim Crow laws, huh? Now let's talk about this black star line shit, right? 
because niggas always talk about, you know, man, he built the motherfucking boat. And, uh, you know, he built a boat to take us back and shoot. Man, he ain't build shit. He started a motherfucking stock program and shit as far as funding to go to that and that. And then he wound up getting motherfucking locked up for mail fraud. He was swindling black Americans about their goddamn money with, with bullshit. Let me get that up. Let me get that up. Let me get that up. No. What is shit at? What is shit at? Ah, oh, don't tell me I dropped that shit. Hmm. Nah, that's why I don't like to smoke before I go the fuck in. Alright. Alright, we'll just go right here. Cause I, 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 I can't find that shit right now. But I got something that kind of speaking up on it and the shit that they speaking up on is easily to be fucking found they wouldn't even be writing this shit all right all right all right federal investigation into the financing of the black star line along with the blistering analysts of the shipping line by W.E.B. Du Bois in the NAACP Crisis Magazine gave fuel to Garvey Black critics. Randolph personally critiqued the economic feasibility of the Black Star Line and the Messenger, accusing Garvey of squandering the hard-earned money of his of his hardworking poor supporters. Right? These are black leaders calling them out on that shit. Black opposition to Garvey coincide into what was came to known as Marcus uh Garvey must go campaign supporters of this campaign known collectively as friends of Negro freedom intended to unmask Garvey as a fraud before his black supporters they had also appealed to the federal government to investigate the irregularities into the black star line and to look into alleged act of violence on parts of Marcus Garvey in a circle right and what type of violence are they talking about, right? On January 15, 1923, a group of eight prominent black people petitioned Attorney General Harry Daugherty asking the U.S. government to continue its persecution of Garvey on charges of mail fraud and to investigate acts of violence attributed to Garvey's followers, among them the assassination in early january 1923 in new orleans of jwh easton all right all right so let me pull this down 
Let me pull this down. We're going to get up out of here. 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 And we're going to get up out of here. And we're going to do this. And we just went over a lot of shit, right? And as we went over, I want you to notice a couple of key things, right? What he said about blacks in New Orleans in front of some white people, you know, them type of niggas that are shit on their own people. He said that we don't deserve to ride in the cars or none of that because we didn't build none. Who the fuck told you that, nigga? There's overwhelming evidence that showed that we built a lot of that shit. Two, he met with the KKK and said they were similarly alike and they aligned with the same ideas. Since the early 1800s, America has been trying to get niggas to move the fuck out of America. They started with the ACS and they had niggas, they was pulling strings on that. So all these Pan-Africans is what you're seeing is really is just another angle that they hitting at. This time they hitting you with your own people, banging on your emotions. Motherfuckers that look like you. Let me correct that. Motherfuckers that look like you. You got this motherfucker coming up here pushing all this Pan-African shit, right? Right? Let me see. What I'm trying to show you is who are all these Pan Africans. What that shit at? I want this shit pulled up.
Man, my bad, y'all. This is some bullshit. All right, we just going to go here, man. Sorry about that, man. Sorry about that shit too, too long. So what I'm going to do is, right, I'm going to go show you who. The first Pan-African Conference in, 19, in the 1900s. Who funded that shit and who was to keep people behind that shit? That's what I'm going to show. Just to give you an understanding of what I'm trying to walk down to. Like I said, man, I don't fucked around and schmo. My bad. I'll be tweaking, right? The first Pan-African Conference was in 1919, all right? Here you go. The first Pan-African Congress was held in London in July 1900s prior to the Paris Exhibition of the 1900s in order to allow tourists of African descent to attend both. Organized primarily by Trinidarian Henry Sylvester Williams. Have y'all ever heard of him? Have you ever heard of Henry Sylvester Williams? I did. I heard a few Pan-Africans bring this nigga up. Samuel Coleridge Taylor. The youngest delegate from the UK. Another Trinidarian. This motherfucker ain't even black. This, this nigga is from India. What the fuck? Oh, wow. A British politician. Another European. Hmm. Okay, here go one nigga, Henry Francis Downing. Oh, he he from the descendant of them niggas that went to Liberia. He don't count. W. E. Du Bois. When I looked into who the fuck his parents was, he real suspicious too. Alexander Walters from Kentucky. Another Trinidarian. Oh, no, we went across that shit. All right. On 24th of September, 1897, Henry Sylvester Williams had been instrumental in finding the African Association, not to be confused with the association from promoting discovery in the interior of Africa. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, let's click on that. Let's click on that. The Association for Promoting the Discovery of the Interior Parts of Africa, commonly known as the African Association, founded in London on the 9th of June in 1787, with a British club dedicated to the exploration of West Africa with the mission of discovering the origins and course of the Niger River and the location of Timbuktu. The formation of this group was effectively the beginning of the age of 
African exploration. Hmm. Organized by dozens of title men and uh, you don't say, Sway. You don't say, Sway. You don't say, Sway. Hey. Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? I thought they already knew all they, I thought they already would have known about the interior of West Africa by 1788. Did y'all see that? All right, man, let me go and get this last one in, man, because I'm ready to go ahead and wrap this shit up. All right. From timeline. In the new twist of old age, in a new twist on the age of old racism called to go back to Africa, a black man in Indiana just created a GoFundMe page daring racist to cover his travels expenses to the com- to the uh to the continent. If you want me to go back to Africa, I will gladly go telling races, blah, 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 blah. It sounds like a stunt. But for many years, this kind of move was a real political strategy employed by black activists. For centuries, black men and women have attempted to relocate to Africa, often maintaining the belief that black immigration also referred to as reparation, uh, reproach, uh, repatriation will reunite them with their ancestors and return them to their native lands. One of the earliest efforts of this kind was led by Paul Cuffey, a wealthy African-American businessman and an avid sailor who traveled extensively to and from West Africa in the 19th century. Concerning about the welfare of the people of African descent in the United States, Coffee began to endorse immigration to Sierra Leone, where he led a group of 38 individuals using his own funds to cover travel. In the years following Kofi Delphi in 1817, the American Colonization Society, an organization founded by a coalition of white slave owners and Quakers, played a central role in supporting black immigration. While members of the ACS advocated the abolishing of slavery, they found the organization on the racist premise that African-Americans and whites could not peacefully coexist. As a result, they actively endorsed black immigration as and played a significant role in relocating African-Americans to West Africa during the mid 19th century. The organization received widespread support from prominent white Americans, believe it or not. 100,000 appropriation from Congress. Between 1817 and 1866, the the ACS sent an estimate 13,000 to Liberia and established a nation as a colony for free men and women. While many race leaders criticized the racist agenda of the ACS, a cadre of black leaders welcomed the organization assistance. During the late 19th century, Bishop Henry Turner of the African Methodist Church became one of the most vocal proponents for black integration, insisting that African-Americans should take pride in their homeland and convinced that extinction was the only alternative to immigration. Turner appealed to African-Americans to lead the country. Utilizing a variety of outlets, including newspapers, he advocated for immigration as the best means to improve social economic conditions. His, re- his efforts resulted in the immigration of an estimate of 500 to Liberia. This is the type of shit they was playing on us. Up in New York. Look at my man. My man walking past that shit like, man, get this bullshit the fuck out of here, nigga. In the decades following, several black activists and intellectuals would lead the fight of, for black immigration, often relying on assistance of white supremacists. So why is these very same people that's telling you to leave here because these motherfuckers ain't going to do you no good is invite, is uh, looking for funding from these very same people? You don't say, huh? 
often relying on a system from white supremacists and her segregations eager to rid the countries of black people. During the early 20th century, Marcus Garvey, the charismatic black nationalist leader of the Universal Negro Improvement Association, became one of the leading proponents of black immigration. Similar to Bishop Turner, Garvey and his supporters reached out to white segregationists including Ernest Severe Cox. Oh, you don't say, Sway. He reached out to the very same eugenics movement person that founded the Racial Integrity Act of 1924 and also the Sterilization Act of uh, 1924. He reached out to this man in the effort to solicit financial and political support for the UNIA plans. In a controversial decision that generated widespread criticism, Garvey later met the imperial wizard. This is who he reached out to get funds from. All right. All right. So you see it over and over. Even Mitty Marlene Gordon, founder of the peace movement of Ethiopia, collaborated with individuals like Senator Mississippi Senator Bilbo and launched a matter letter writing campaign to solicit support from white supremacists to help advance her pro-immigration campaign. Her effort field yielded a few hundred dollars <laughs> during the 1940 Pan-Africans leader Amy Garvey also reached out to them, including Bilbo and Cox, to ask them to match their separatist views with tangible resources, including money and facilities to immigration to Africa. All right. So, man, let's get into the ACS, man. And let's go ahead and sum this shit the fuck up. Right. The ACS, originally known as Society of Colonization of Free People of Color of America, was founded in 1816 by Robert Finley. All right. To encourage the support of the migration of free blacks to the continent of uh, Africa. There were several factors that led to the establishment of the American Colonization Act. The number of free people of color grew steadily following the American Revolutionary War. Constantly, slave owners grew increasingly concerned that free blacks might encourage or help the slaves to escape or rebel. In addition, mo most white Americans saw African Americans as racially inferior and felt the aggregation or immigration of African Americans with white American culture was impossible and undesirable. This reinforced the notion that African Americans should be relocated to somewhere else they could live free of prejudice where they could be citizens all right all right all right all right now i know i got a little lost in thought a few times and shit i have to come back but look p gang this the whole thing right here right all these motherfuckers that was telling your ass to go back to Africa, paint all these pictures and shit. The very same people they say that hate you is the very same people that they was doing business with on the back burner and shit and asking for money who was funding everything about them. And guess what? The same, the same ideology that these so-called black leaders was pushing was already being pushed by white motherfuckers a hundred years prior. So what I'm seeing is, is that now you got niggas coming and pushing the agenda that these these racist supremacists, these motherfucker uh, white supremacists and shit was trying to do to us 100 years prior that our people weren't going for. So they had to go get some niggas to do it. This nigga Garvey telling you how you need to go back to Africa and fight and die is real liberty and cowards die a thousand deaths, but then tell you you shouldn't do nothing about that nigga they just hung for trying to sit down on the motherfucking bus or the train car next to another motherfucking white man. That they actually love the Jim Crow laws that you enacted that basically beat down and tear down on our people. You want to know why a motherfucker like him would say some shit like that? Because nigga, he ain't from where the fuck we from. He ain't go through what we go through. 
But then he brought his black ass up over here to motherfucking pick up a head of steam because he couldn't do shit where the fuck he was from. His own motherfucking Jamaicans weren't even feeling this nigga. But he came here and riled you up and caught your attention and shit and tried to lead you down the river. Not only that, but he set up a fictitious motherfucking corporation called the Black Star Line, supposed to be a shipping company and with all these stocks and shit involved in it. And all it was was a Ponzi scheme to scheme you niggas up out of your own goddamn money. And the government wasn't going to do shit about it. Other Negro leaders had to get on their ass to investigate this nigga and prosecute this motherfucker. You don't say, Sway. You don't say, Sway. So, is Marcus Garvey really someone that we can look to as a, a, a black leader, a Negro leader, down for the cause for the American Negro of the United States of America? I see him meeting with the eugenist movement, asking money from E.S. Cox, which was basically one of the top three with uh, Walter Plecker, uh, E.S. Cox, and who the fuck was the other motherfucker? Uh, the other white man. He reached out to them for money. And to unite with them under one accord of getting our ass the fuck up out of here and over to Africa. Not only that, he reached out to the KKK to be able to do business in the South. And they granted them that right. He went to ask for permission from the but then write a letter about, nigga, I'm willing to die anywhere about Africa because a coward dies a thousand deaths. I mean, my G, you did the most cowardly shit, nigga. You met with, our, with two key components that's been enemies to our people. Not only that, you shitted on us and articles and shit. You know what you remind me of? You remind me of the past time Akon. If you look at Akon today, Akon came to America, got famous, got money. Everything he doing in Africa right now would not be done had he not came to America and got support from us. And the moment after he got that money and got the notoriety, every chance you look at his interviews, that nigga shit on us. Because them niggas ain't us. Niggas be pretending to be us, come amongst us, but then when they go back amongst their own, they all shit on us. Tell me I'm lying. Now, I'm not going to say all of them, but majority of them shit on us. And niggas know we ain't lying. And all these Pan-African Pan-Africanism, majority of these motherfuckers come from the islands. Now, it ain't no disrespect there, huh? but this is the fact. And all of this school of thought is coming out of one location in the mainland and spreading to other places. New York. So can we trust Pan-Africanism? Do Pan-Africanism got American Negroes interests at heart? Or they got their own agendas and shit and look at us as dupable to come and motherfucking fund the motherfucking manpower behind their ideologies and shit. Man, look how long them niggas been out there selling them motherfucking unks, nigga. And now they telling you, you from West Africa. And then when you do the history of this shit, West Africa and, and Egypt ain't got no connection whatsoever. The fuck you selling unks for, nigga? You need to be selling lip plates, uh, ear plates, 
uh that little choke shit on your neck uh shaka i almost need to cut the ponytail down and just have that little shit at the top and shit so i i, I just want to know I just want to know. Yeah, tell me you right. And I state that all the time. I say Pan-Africanism and Atlantic slave trade theory is a disrespect to West Africa. Because West Africa had kingdoms and shit up over there. They want no privileged savages and shit. As a matter of fact, I also reiterate that the colonization of West Africa, starting with the first colony founded Sierra Leone by the British in the 1780s, set the trend in line among other European nations starting to grab spots along that bitch, but bringing in American Negroes with them to help fight and colonize the area. So by default, a lot of our peoples from over here got duped into going over there into a war that they ain't even know what's going on until they touched down on the soil. Because them niggas from here going over there was warm with the motherfucking Africans and shit that was from them. But the fact of the matter is, wasn't no West Africans coming over here telling us that we was African. So it has nothing to do with them. It was motherfucking uh, these racist white societies, ACS, and also non-mainland niggas coming to the mainland telling us that we was from that shit. And the fact of the matter is, is when you look where they tried to get started up in their own place, they own people weren't even feeling that shit at first. So they had to come here to even get some notoriety. So I can't go and start breaking down royal bloodlines of West African digging that shit because my peoples ain't going to know that shit. I got to deal with the motherfuckers that they know because once I can break down the motherfuckers they know, then we can start going deeper and then start touching them to the people that they don't know about. How the fuck I'm going to tell them about somebody they don't know about? So I got to hit them with, with the people that they do know about. Because if I'm talking about motherfuckers they don't know about, they ain't even gonna catch their attention. They don't even get no fuck. They give a fuck about. They don't even know who the fuck I'm talking about. Oh, this nigga's just talking shit. But if I bring up somebody like uh, Marcus Garvey, Paul Kofi, uh, Henry Henry Sylvester Williams, and hearing that name, Henry Sylvester Williams, you would think that nigga was American. That nigga was, he ain't even from the mainlands. So, and I already showed what, you know what, I'm going to show that again too. Let me get to that. Fuck it. Going to get into that too. That shit out. Uh, that Negro channel. Uh. Mm. Let's see how the grassroots niggas felt about all this shit. Because all we study getting is words, a motherfucker that, that's been put on the front street intentionally to grasp our attention. Them real niggas, they weren't trying to show on TV. You have to go to them towns and know about them niggas.
Let's see how let's see how our brothers and sisters back then felt about all that bullshit. Let's see how they felt. Let's see how they felt. The attitude of the free Negroes toward African colonization. In the midst of the perplexities arise from various plans for the solution of the race problem 100 years ago, the colonization movement became all the things to all men. Some contended that it was a philanthropic enterprise. Others considered it a scheme for getting rid of the free people of color because of the semi menace they were to slavery. It was doubtless a combination of several ideas. Furthermore, the meaning of the colonization varied around the one handed according to the use of slaveholding class hope to make up it. And on the other hand, according to the intensity of the attacks directed against it by the abolishing and the free people of color because of the acquaintance attitude of colonization towards the persecution of the free blacks, both in the north and the south. Almost as soon as the Negroes had a chance to express themselves, almost as soon Almost as soon as the Negroes had a chance to express themselves, they offer urgent protests against the policy of removing them to a foreign land. Why is they calling that bitch foreign? Because the American colonization has scarly organized the free people of Richmond, Virginia, thought it was advisable to assemble under the sanction of authority in 1817 to make public expression of their sentiment respecting this movement. William Browler. Lent Craw were the leading spirits of the meeting. They agreed with the society that it was not only proper, but would ultimately tend to benefit or aid a great portion of their suffering fellow creatures to be colonized, but they preferred being settled in the remotest corner of the land of their nativity. Nativity, key word. As the as the president and board of management of the society had been pleased to leave it to the entire discretion of Congress to provide a suitable place for carrying out this plan, they passed a resolution to submit to the wisdom of the body whether it would not be an act of charity to grant them a small portion of their, which is ownership, territory, either on the Missouri River or any place that might seem to them to be most conducive to the public good of their future welfare. Many Negroes, however, immigrated uh, from state from this state doing this. Oh, my bad. I, I skipped the whole fucking section uh, of their territory, either on the Missouri River or any place that might seem to be the most conducive to the public good of their future welfare subject. However, to such rules and regulation of the government of the United States might think proper. Many Negroes, however, immigrated from this state during the later years subsequent accounts indicated too that this increasing interest in colonization among the colored people of the commonwealth extended even in north carolina all right all right so at every chance that the negro had a chance to voice their opinion about the whole african colonization and moving us to Africa, and this is in the Negro Journal of 1916. The Negro Journal. Every chance they got a chance to voice their opinion, they voice objection. And one, they said they didn't want to go to a foreign land, which they was talking about Africa. They asked to be placed in the remotest corner of the land of their nativity, keyword nativity, and their, which means ownership. And then they said the Missouri River. Why would they be calling the Missouri River a place in the land of their nativity? Why would they be calling Africa a foreign land? Why 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 would they be why would they be calling Africa a foreign land? Why would they be saying the land of their nativity? You want to know why? I got something else I wanted to show. That's what I wanted to show. Where the fuck that's at? Let me pull that up. Did I send that over already? Did I send that over already? Let's see. Yeah, I did. There you go. Let's pull this up. All 
All right. So I was going over some census information, you know, like I normally do. All right. And it was dealing with the census in the 1800s. And it was something that caught my attention that I think might catch y'all's too. All right. So this is the report on Indians tax and not tax, the census of 1890, right? So this is a report on all the Indians, the ones taxed and not taxed, all right? Each of the five civilized tribes take a census very often, some every five years, some oftener. The peculiar method of government in the nations whereby the authority at the several capitals are kept advised by the light horse police or town county or district district authorities of change of changes and able them to keep fairly authentic lists of population this is done chiefly for the purpose of resisting the claims of person desiring to be known as a citizen of a tribe and participant in land division and the money to be divided between these Indians on the account of sale of surplus land. Such matters, such records as matter of proof will be invaluable in the future as they will fix the date of settlements of many claimants. The enumerator of the five civilized tribes in Indian territory for the United States census was mostly Indians appointed on the recommendation of the governors or principal chiefs. But some changes was made and almost all were changed in one of the tribes for reasons. For four special agents were sent to Indian territory to supervise the work by an agreement with the governors of the order representative. The wisdom of this policy was apparent when the particular nature of the Indian poli uh, political condition became known. Most opposition was shown to the census. The Creek and Seminole authorities aided it. However, by legislation active, they urged the resident to give information to the numerators, but meetings was held to resist them. Under the circumstances, it was decided to ask a few questions as possible and to get as rule the general statistic of population. It was found difficult to attain the other statistics. The four special agents in charge visit the nation and their report given their observation in detail. The unsettled conditions of the Indian territory and the constant clashing between the whites called intruders and the Indians or their authorities produce a prejudice against the census, which was hard to overcome. So we're going to stop right there. Let's pay attention. The, un the unsettled condition of the Indian territory and the constant clashing between the whites called intruders. And the Indians or their authorities produce a prejudice against the census. So it's two key things we got to point out. When they talked about intruders, they only spoke of white people. All right. The citizen of the five civilized tribes watched jealous with the movement of the United States and its agents as a question of vast moments impending. This made them chary of answering questions proposed by the enumerator, right? So now we're going to get down to what I want to talk about. And I need to blow this up a little bit more. A series a, a series difficulty was met in the answer to, are you an Indian? Under the laws of the five civilized tribes and nations of the Indian territory, a person white in color and features is frequently an Indian. Let's blow that up again. A series, a serious difficult, a serious difficulty was met in the answer to are you an Indian? Under the laws of the five civil of the five tribes or nations of the Indian territory, a person white in color and features is frequently an Indian being so by remote degree of blood or by adoptation. Mm. Mm. So did y'all read that? Did y'all y'all read that? They saying that 
a person white is usually regarded as an Indian by degree of blood or by adoption. Let's keep reading. There are many whites now residents claiming to be Indians who claims have not as yet been acted upon by the nation. Now, let's get into these niggas. What about these niggas, right? All right. Negroes are frequently met who speak nothing but Indian languages. Let's blow that up. All right, y'all ain't gonna let me blow it up. All right. Let's 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 get that big right there. Negroes are frequently met who speak nothing but Indian languages. Hmm. And are Indians by tribal law and customs and others are met who call themselves Indians who have not yet been let me let me uh take it back down so I ain't gotta keep going side to side let's take it down one more and that way I can just read but I have to show y'all that and we're gonna run back over that Negroes are frequently met who speak nothing but Indian language and are Indians by tribal law and customs and others are men who call themselves Indians who have not yet been so acknowledged by the tribes. These circumstances necessarily produce some confusion as to the number of Indians separately designated. Damn, you don't say, Sway. You don't say, Sway. Now, That documentation is a United States government documentation dealing with the 1890 census in Indian territory. Now, one key thing they said was they was calling the whites the intruders. But then when it came to no identically no distinction about being an Indian, they say that the whites was automatically considered an Indian by some degree of blood or adaptation. So then when we get down to the Negroes, majority of the ones they coming across speak nothing but Indian language. Nothing. And there was a lot of them that wasn't being acknowledged yet, which caused a level of confusion. And notice they talk about the white intruders and the automatically being uh, considered as white. You feel me? By adaptation of some degree of blood. But then right up under, they like, man, but these niggas we running across, they don't speak nothing but Indian language, which just causes some motherfucking confusion. You don't say, Sway. You don't say, Sway. Hold on, man. I got to pull that back up again because it's something else in there that I think y'all need to see. I think y'all need to see. There's something else that was in there that I need y'all to see with me one time. One time. Where is that shit at? Where's that at? Where's that that land shit at, right?
Where is that land shit at? Negro Indians, especially in the Creek Nation, can be found in abundance, and some speak only the Creek language. The, the Indians of the, five, of the five civilized tribes are largely one half, one four, and resemble white men more than Indians. Y'all see that? The Indians of the five tribes are largely one half, one fourth, and resemble white men more than Indians. The illustration in this report typically show comparatively few full-blooded Indians. One consistently hearsay mark from travelers in Indian territory. Where are the Indians? You don't say, Sway. You don't say. Where that land shit at? I'm looking for that. What that land shit? I got, I got, I, I gotta, I gotta show that before I get up out of this motherfucker. You know what? I'm going to do a build on this. I'm going to just take that down. So I'm wasting too much time with that. All right. I'm done, man. Hey, look, man. There's no way around it, nigga. We speaking nothing but Indian language, nigga. We got to emancipate. And became citizens. And all these niggas that's telling you, motherfucker, you from Africa, these is foreign born niggas coming here trying to push that shit on you and using feeble minded niggas of the mainland to push their ideology, which they got from the very same motherfucking white oppressor they claim to be against. So, with that being said, man, I'm going to drop the link just for a quick little second. And, you know, anybody want to come up, you're more than welcome to come up. I don't give a fuck if you agree or disagree. You're more than welcome to, uh, man, appreciate you only one God on some real shit, man. That's what's up, man. You know, you're more than welcome to come in, speak, whatever. I mean, Tub, man, you got a lot to say, man. Why don't you just come up here, bro? Come up here and show us. Show us. I just showed you a... A government contract. So, so these African niggas just came in America and just started um, picking up everything, languages, everything. You know, in one instance, y'all tell us that they that these African slaves ran and hid into the Indians and shit. But then in the next minute, you want to tell us that they were slaves of these Indians. So, which one is it? You gonna run from one slavery to go be a slave for another motherfucker? Come on, man. Make this shit make sense to me. I done heard niggas sit there and say, oh, they ran and hid amongst the Indians. And then 
when we be like, nah, nigga, they, nigga, they was just running back to family and shit. Could we the same fucking people and shit? No, nah, the Indians was enslaving your ass. So which one is it? Why would you run to be enslaved? How these niggas picked up all these different languages, but can't speak the African shit? So these niggas to learn every language in America: English, French, Dutch, Spanish, all Indian language and shit. But don't know, don't know how to speak African again. Had to be retaught African languages. Come on, man. Make this shit make sense to me. Why the fuck is all the Negroes is speaking nothing but Indian language? But why is they telling you that all these white looking motherfuckers is being considered the Indians? What happened? Make this shit make sense for me, man. You know, man, I dropped the link in the chat. Anybody is welcome. Just make this shit make sense to me. Because I just pulled up a government actual document from the 1890 census. I also pulled up information about your favorite Pan-African Marcus Garvey and shit showing that he was reaching out to all these motherfucking people we was against, getting funds and shitting on us, talking shit about us. And he swindled people up out of their goddamn money with this fake ass slave ship. That he was buying from Europe. So make this shit make sense to me, man. I never said the creek and the creek was the same. All I'm saying to his nigga is that, hey, some ain't adding the fuck up. At one minute, they called the whites the intruders. And the next minute, they say that that they the ones that's being exclusively considered as motherfucking uh is Indians. But the only niggas that speak in the language is the niggas. So who taught them the language? That's be real about this shit. Everybody always talking about some we don't speak our language no more. But who taught them the language? Because we was the only ones speaking the language then. This is 1890. This is not that fucking long ago. We ain't going back to the 1500s, the 1600s, 1700s. We going to the end of the 1800s. Going into the 1900s. Make this shit make sense. Why is Marcus Garvey pushing the same goddamn ideology as the ACS and these white supremacists is supporting his ass? All right, so if we disconnected, bro, come show us. I will mute the fuck up. Matter of fact, I will drop the fuck off. We will leave your screen up there. The only one on this motherfucker will let you up here and let you teach. Show us. Because I'm tired of you niggas talking about the Portuguese East Indies and the Dutch East Indies and the British East Indies company was bringing all these slaves from West Africa. Stop it, slime. They was operating in the East Indies and transporting motherfucking Asian slaves across the Pacific. And the fucking documentation there is to prove that that's where that company was operating out of. And the only part of Africa they was touching was fucking Mozambique. And they was barely right there. Because they didn't really go past the Indian subcontinent because the goddamn Morocco, the fucking Ottomans was on their ass. And this is where all the world currency was going at the time to Manila and to the Asian continent. The silver, the silver they were stealing from us over here in the fucking Americas. So what's going on? And they didn't even start colonizing Africa didn't even do a push of that shit until seven to the fucking 1780s and 90s. I thought they been did that. Come show me, man. Come show me this shit. Why, when I do research on my family, I'm seeing motherfuckers as head of households in the time they should have been slaves. Make this shit make sense. Why is the government the agent? For the government is writing back that, hey, man, all the ones being claimed Indians is clearly white. And the only motherfucker that's speaking the language is the niggas. Why is this government agent firsthand account? It's saying this. And where the fuck is Marcus Garvey from? What William Sylvester Henry is from? 
Where the fuck are these niggas from? All your pan Africans and shit. Where the fuck are they from? Y'all niggas the worst. American niggas telling us to keep following non-mainland niggas ideology instead of bringing up our own fucking ideology and following ourselves. We gonna follow teaching us some foreign niggas that got they shit from some white niggas. Y'all a bunch of fucking followers. But then want to tell me our grandmas and shit was stupid when they was talking about that they was Indian. They ain't know what the fuck they was talking about. They just didn't want to be black. Why you got niggas pressing the attorney general to lock this motherfucker Marcus Garvey up? And now y'all niggas pushing him like he the fucking the black messiah and Jesus or some shit. Y'all niggas is religiously following these motherfuckers. Okay, did it not say that they was that majority? They was the ones, the majority of the ones was speak was the only ones. So, so why didn't they say no white people was speaking Indian language? I'm tired of you niggas saying I'm not reading this shit in whole totality, bro. I read that shit in whole. You're not gonna play that shit today, bro. Come on, man. Why did it say that? Why? Come on, man. Come up here and make this shit make sense for me, man. I don't get it, man. Y'all niggas, like, man, you know, man, I used to talk shit in the chat, too, but when them niggas drop them links, nigga, I hop up there and say what the fuck I feel, man. The fuck, nigga? Like, hit the link. Come show your evidence. Come, come show me that they lied about Marcus Garvey meeting up with the KKK, or meeting up with the Virginia Eugenics Movement that caught that that had one of the worst laws passed against niggas. Reclassification on top of that sterilization of our fucking women. Why the fuck is he meeting with this motherfucker? Why the fuck is he saying that? To pandering to these white motherfuckers in New Orleans talking about some, oh man, the niggas need to be quiet. They don't deserve to ride in y'all train cars and shit because y'all ain't built shit. Nigga, we all know we built the first car. We all know that George Washington Carver gave fucking Henry Ford to fucking be the first to mass produce cars. We also know that it was Negro Railroad companies that was leading from Chicago to Oklahoma, from Arkansas to Oklahoma. So these motherfuckers had ownerships of these railroads when they was getting into Oklahoma. So what the fuck is your man Marcus Harvey talking about? What's up, OG? I'm sorry, man. You got it, man. Nah, I want good. these two to make, it make sense to me, man. We did more with a peanut than them niggas did with anything. Go ahead, my brother. Keep keep grilling them. Because they can have all the African shit from the Bible. Man, I'm starting to understand. All documents. What, I'm starting to understand what this whole, you remember that term African booty scratcher? I'm starting to understand why that term came from. Because while we was out there getting it, not only in the South, nigga, we were some of the largest agricultural landowners in the South, nigga, during the time that's supposed to be right out the slavery. The slavery became the, the, the largest landowners in the South. But on top of that, we was the most prosperous in fucking Oklahoma. Make this shit make sense to me. How the fuck did how so so we was out there getting a bag while y'all was over there scratching y'all ass talking about some let's go back to Africa. I'm starting to think the term African booty scratcher came from that back then because while these niggas was out there checking the bag, building up prosperity for our people, y'all was running around scratching your ass talking about some let's go back to Africa. Nigga, what the fuck you mean? Let's go back to Africa. Nigga, we got our own banks. We got our own schools, our own markets, our own fucking towns. And you want me to leave to go back to a motherfucking place I don't even know about? You heard what the Negroes told y'all in the Negro Journal. Why the fuck would we go to a foreign land? That's one. 
Two, we want to be placed in the land of our nativity, which they call the Missouri River. And guess where the Missouri River run into? It runs into Oklahoma as well. Oh, you don't say, Sway. You know, Missouri was also part of that Oklahoma territory, too, at one point in time. So y'all was just running around scratching y'all ass talking about Africa while my ancestors was out there checking a the bag, nigga. Now y'all niggas is some motherfucking pan-African crackheads. Look, man, stop talking to the chat. Bring your ass up here, man. Come on, man. We cool. Come on. Not a coincidence. Come on, bro. We joke and laugh. Not only in my shit, but in other people's shit. Come on. Tub and day. I'm probably the only nigga that haven't that I nigga. I'm the only motherfucker that let you rant in the chat always. Come on, you don't show you nothing but respect, bro. But now y'all motherfucker writing some shit that's some bullshit. Come up here and explain that shit, man. Come on, man. Come show your brother some love, man. Come give me a come give me a West African hug or some shit, man. Come drop some of this knowledge on me, man. Should I get off the panel? I think I'm gonna be disrespectful. <laughs> I get off. Yeah. See, this is what I'm talking about right here. You see that? What that person said? I agree with that person. I agree with them. There was dark-skinned people all over this world that just always been where the fuck they been. And you know what's crazy, though? And you, old, you older than me, OG. You know, before niggas start letting it be known who the fuck we is as far as over here, one of them, one of the favorite, favorite line of these Pan-Africans, especially when it came to, like, white people and Jews and shit, Man, we populated all four corners of this earth. But now we ain't, we won in America. We won in America. That shit was forced <laughs> taught to us in school. It was forced taught to us in school. I'm 55 years old. That shit was forced to us to learn. You know, you know who bought Africanism? Um Studies into the American to the American school system. H.R. Hercules. Come on, man. Let's stop playing, man. Y'all niggas playing games, man. Look, stop it, slide, man. We not gonna play these motherfucking games today, man. Matter of fact, truth, you was talking about W. E. D. Du Bois. He sold us the fuck out too. Along with the Mar Marcus Garvey's, Noble Drew Ali's, Martin Luther King's, they were all agents for the government that you were speaking about when you was reading those that 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 information. It spoke of agents several times, but nobody wanted to talk about the agents. No, they love pushing that nigga Marcus Garvey and that red, black, and green shit. You know Marcus Garvey the one that gave y'all that red, black, and green too, right? Him and Nobu Drew Ali. Nah, nah, nah. We ain't going to put Nobu Drew Ali in this, OG. I am. Mark. Mark. <laughs> I am. <laughs> no, nah, hold on, OG. I just got to say this. I got you, bro. I got to say did, this, bro. They were all this, goddamn bro. agents, man. I got to say this, bro. Go ahead. Marcus Garvey is the one that gave the Pan-Africans the red, black, and green flag. He's the same one that talks shit about your ancestors that also uh, praised the white man for his Jim Crow laws that we know was so detrimental to our ancestors. We got some grandmas. We got we got stories about great grandmas and shit from our from our relatives that talk about man. I don't know what the fuck she seen, but she just didn't talk. I don't know what great grandpa seen. He just didn't talk. He did not want to talk about it. So nigga, they went through some shit through the Jim Crow era that made them silent. And here it is. You got these boot licking ass salt water niggas. talking about they admire and praise these motherfuckers for enforcing their Jim Crow laws. Like, just think about that. 
This was Marcus, not only Marcus Garvey, but the majority of the people in this movement. So not only, I'm pretty sure a lot of them was niggas from the, the islands that stayed in the mainland now, but also mainland niggas. He convinced mainland niggas to have the motherfucking thought process of being thankful for laws that beat down their own fucking parents and maybe even they self at the time. Just think about that shit. And this the motherfucker you want me to follow? Wave that flag and that fist? Man, go my fist. Nigga, red, black, and green, nigga, that shit ugly together. Except for them mics, I ain't even gonna lie. Them, 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 them Jordans and shit, them, them bitches raw as fuck. But they mostly green, nigga. They ain't that same type of green and that. They like ash green and shit. But nah, let's keep it G, though. How the fuck can we honor this man knowing that he swindled our people out of money with that Black Star Line shit? He was happy about Jim Crow. Make this shit make sense to me, man. It do. They sold us the fuck out. That's what happened. It makes you know this, good sense. And it's fucked up because it's like this type of conversation and this type of rhetoric will make it seem like you like like I'm going against the islands and shit like no that's not the case at all but I gotta state the motherfucking obvious though a lot of these pan Africanists and Negro motherfuckers coming up out of that east coast that northeast coast to be more specific is a bunch of niggas that came from other geographic location pushing this rhetoric and this ideology that the dumbfounded our fucking people and the very enemy that they claim that we supposed to be uniting the fighting, they're secretly meeting them and being funded by them, but also pushing their ideology for them. That whole black to Africa shit started with these racist ass fucking white folks. Let me say this real quick too, True. A lot of those islands that's off, off the coast, they were they were colonialized by the the England well before the Americans was colonialized and you and and you can look that up a lot of most of them islands Haiti is the one that fought back but all those islands was colonialized by by Great Britain or France And that's a fact. One thing I can say about the Haiti Revolution, they didn't fight to go back to Africa. Them niggas fought to control the landmass that they was on. Exactly. Not to leave, but to control the landmass they was on. Like I said, all of those islands was under the control of, 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 of England. At one point, a no, hey, you, hey, hold on one second, man, because I got to state something real quick, right? And I got to keep this G, right? Us down in the South, Brody, and in the Midwest and shit like that, we want to slow to come along. I'm going to be honest with you. There used to be a lot of sayings that I don't say because I don't want to disrespect any of my brothers from that region and no shit. But, nigga, we used to have our eyes up on, on you New York niggas coming to our areas trying to speak that bullshit, bro. And that's a big fact. Like, I hate to admit that. I don't mean no disrespect when I say that. But, nigga, especially when it came to all that knowledge shit and all that, bro, we had our antennas up on niggas coming from that area with that shit. Matter of fact, the Chicago Defender used to go in on them niggas. All them niggas. Booker T. Washington, W.E.B. Du Bois, especially during that flood of 1927, and they seen how them niggas was responding to that shit. Man, the Chicago Defender went the fuck in on all them motherfuckers. 
So we weren't fucking with that shit, slime. Because we knew it was bullshit. We knew who the fuck we was. But uh, we got some more people up on here, man. Shout out to Beast Mode. Shout out to Nicholas Funt. No, man. Salute to the guys, man. What's going on? Salute. 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 Hey, salute, everybody. Salute. Salute. Appreciate you, too, for bringing me up. I'm just going to come up on for, for, for a second. It's, it, um, it's like um, when I, I went on top um, panel today. It's like when I said, it's like around that time period, like the 1880s, all the way up through like the night to the 1940s, they dropped a religious spirit bomb on the motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? You had, they dropped the Hebrew Israelite movement, they dropped the Moorish movement, they dropped all these different type of ideologies to cause nothing but confusion. You know what I'm saying? And all of them is directed to try to pull us back to that region. You know what I'm saying? Hey, and bro, can that's I touch where the problem is. And, and also, they signed 501Cs to work with the government. Go ahead, yeah. my brother. And yeah, and it's all... We spiritually fucked up, basically. You know what I'm saying? Because it's all psyops. It's all in the mind. You know what I'm saying? And it's the cause confusion because the Hebrew Israelites not gonna get along with the Moors, the Moors not gonna get along with the Hebrew Israelites, the and the the Islamic people, you know, the NOI, they not gonna get along with none of them. And the people that's naturally based spiritually off of nature, which is more like us, is not going to get along with none of them. You know what I'm saying? And it's to always keep up confusion. That's how they can play the black and white game. That's how they can play all these different foreign games. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It's all to 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 um just always keep us in the loop of confusion. It's always to keep us from understanding these time periods. What really went on in these time periods? It's all to keep us throw it off spiritually. You know what I'm saying? Because if you spiritually fucked up, then your reality is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? I'm with you, my brother. And, yeah. and it's going to cause tension with people who maybe do see in the same thing, like the Moors and probably us, probably seeing more of the same thing. It's just that just one word could cause a whole damn fucking a whole fight. You know what I'm saying? Because I say I'm American Indian or Aboriginal can start a whole fight with a Moor, you know what I'm saying, over the word Moor. You know what I'm saying, and that's what it. That's what all this was meant to meant to do, and it's a lot of people that looks like us. You know what I'm saying, and maybe we have bloodline ties with them, but it's a lot of people that is working with these people. You know what I'm saying. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of people working with these with these people to keep all this melee going on. You're a hundred percent on point, my brother. Keep going. And they don't tell and, and all it is, and all it is just a whole ball of confusion. Remember in the nineteen twenties, that's when what they call what the nineteen 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 twenty, that's when they, all them most of the, a lot of them between that time period of eighteen eighty all the way to the nineteen forty when all your 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 maskers came along. You know what I'm saying? All your, your, you know what I'm saying? Your Black Wall Streets and knocking down, you know what I'm saying? Different types of places where we was economically strong at, you know what I'm saying? Started hey, coming Nick, along. They started hey, let, me, let, let, me, let me interject with you because you, you hitting it, bro. And this is the thing what we got to understand. You got two time periods of where you seeing uh, Negro scholarship at. You seeing it in the 1800s and the early 1800s where it was uh, doing during the time of the ACS and all that shit where it was predominant at with them. And all them niggas was, you had some that was trying to push that back to Africa shit. And you had niggas that was rejecting that shit. Then you slide to the 1900s. It's almost like the ACS scheme had a head of steam from a bunch of niggas though this time. Mm -hmm. And then after they let them squandering the field of going back and forth before the public and shit to at least push the ideology of this whole pipe dream of African shit, then that's when 
these foreign white motherfuckers from other European countries that moved to America start establishing institution with these teachers because now you have enough of the population who mindset is under that understanding based off their own having these arguments about that shit. So it was all about planting the seed from back in motherfucking the early motherfucking 1800s and shit after the Haitian Revolutionary War. You know, that shit scared the mm. fuck out of them. And at the same time, you, know, had, uh, you had that revolution going on in what is Colombia today, too. Like a lot of people don't know that Haitian Revolutionary War was a three front war. You had it going on in Haiti. You had it going on in South America and you had it going on in the United States in the Gulfport area of Mississippi and Louisiana. What happened was Haiti won. South America won because most of the forces was on the mainland of the Americas and they was more fo focused and concentrated on quelling that because they didn't want that to spread into the interior. And due to that, they had to give up that war and leave the French on their own with uh with because Britain did send a fleet down there to try to help and lost the same way mm. how Spain sent in the fleet. Uh, uh, the Dutch sent in a fleet with the Spanish and the Portuguese into Colombia and they lost that shit. So these is all documented uh, instances of things going on all at the same time. Chronology, man, is key to mm -hmm. everything. You feel and, me? Uh, and, and like, like you know what I'm saying? Most of those people that was in Haiti was Natchez Indian. That was fucked there. Not to mention you know the brother. Not to mention the brothers and sisters from the Northeast that was sent down to the mouth. Yeah, yeah. See, we don't fight motherfuckers. We just don't know who to fight. That's the problem. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why we so badass, bad tempered. That's why we short tempered with each other. You know what I'm saying? It's just that we don't know who to direct that, that energy to. That's where the females come in at. But if they can't get their shit together, then she have a we're going to get our shit together. It so all stems how to direct that energy. It all stems from the fact that the matter is, is that these motherfuckers had us believing that they were separate entities when they was one entity and whole. They was willing to sacrifice some of their peasants to paint the narrative that they was in tour with each other and they was friends with this group. And the other ones was friends with this group. And then when the war started, you realize, nigga, you fighting your own people, but they didn't kill somebody you know. And yeah. now it's been on and on. And while they sitting at the table to bring forth a truth, uh, a truce to take some of your land away from you, they used you mm -hmm. to deplete you, steal some of your land. And while they sitting at the table eating good and drinking and signing this treaty, your ass still on the battlefield battling each other and still pissed off we never forgave each other for that shit and then and, and then the now you pan africans get an understanding now if you're pan african you in the chat now you get an understanding where you get the whole indian enslaving negroes at because it ain't nothing but wordplay it wasn't nothing but niggas fighting niggas the whole time all they did is put a cell it's no different than what they do today they go to foreign countries. They drop a cell in there. He get along, start to find out information about how to infiltrate, what's going on with these people, you know what I'm saying, and how to infiltrate and cause confusion amongst those people. It's the same thing they do everywhere. They haven't changed now tactics. You know what's crazy, though, is they'll ask questions like, oh, well, what the reclassification at uh, the racial integrity? Oh, that was just in Virginia. All right, well, uh, some of the first uh dockets on on the laws of the supreme courts of these states and shit is dealing with uh people being reclassified as something that they ain't then you see where the own census taker write down that ma majority of the creek nation is of negro descent and if you go there today it's not that and, and it's, it's like in louisiana who, who was the person that done all the changing of the the the, the, the census records in louisiana and they own me some lady named they own a white lady Name they on me blue or something like that. You know what I'm saying? She the man, one that falling Walter Pickle and done the same thing in Louisiana. Man, you know what's crazy, man? Uh I was telling bro, and I ain't, you know, man, I ain't I ain't want to say this because I ain't want to make it say like I was cloud chasing the dick right. But I gotta say this, right? I told uh James Meredith, the famous civil rights activist, I was on the phone with him 
what I found out about my family. And he was like, damn, you, you, you finding out all this. He was like, you ain't even went and seen the records yet, have you? I was like, what records? And he gave me his information and everything, told me to stay in contact with him. So I haven't even went down there to see the records yet. All I got is based on what my family is. And you know, like how James Meredith know who he is. Mm -hmm. feel? He's a Shawtaw Indian. His great grandfather is a famous Shawtaw chief, Samuel Cobb, the last official elected Shawtaw chief. So everyone after his great grandfather was instituted by the United States government, which would make them a fraudulent chief because they wasn't mm -hmm. made a chief by the times of immortal in the ways of the real nation and shit. Right. You mm -hmm. feel me? So he know who his people is. His people was the teachers. Mm -hmm. It was against Shawtaw law to write down any of this shit. So we was Johnny come lately when it came to paperwork. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why a lot of people talk about that Bible and they family because they people had that Bible that wasn't a Bible, but it was a genealogy record. Of all they family members, they was trying to put in as much as possible so it didn't get lost because the shit was getting lost. A lot of the people was emancipate was uh, assimilating into society. They were speaking a foreign. They was you know they were speaking differently. They was educated differently. They 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 trained. The thought was moving differently. So then they seen the realization of having to write these shits down. But when it came to doing with business and land surveying, which this government did a lot of the reason why it is so many records because of the land part. Uh, there are records there. Mm hmm. And we got to get in there to go see that shit. And see, like my grandfather, he would have if he lived today, he would all he'd have been almost 120 something years old. But I remember him, you know what I'm saying? But I was a kid, but I used to always remember stories. And my grandmother and them say, when I see white people down here in Louisiana know French. They can speak French. Some of them, that's all they do is speak French. All right. My grandfather didn't speak English. He spoke a different type of language. With his Cre they labeled it as Creole. But here's the thing. White folks couldn't understand what he was saying. You know what I'm saying? They couldn't understand what the hell he was saying because if he was speaking Creole, they can pick up on some of the words he said. You know what right. I'm saying? But he couldn't. He he wasn't speaking Creole. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't write English. He couldn't speak English. You know what I'm saying? But he was and speaking what? a language that whenever they came by, they they he, they be talking shit like a motherfucker about him, about well, white people. <laughs> They had laws. Uh, they had laws in place dealing with Indians. So a lot of our people in those areas wouldn't even say they was Indian, nigga. They can be killed on sight for being off mm -hmm. a reservation. That was an actual fucking law. So of course they wouldn't be saying that they Indians and shit. And like you know, the brother uh, just posted right here. I got this up. He right. We had a bunch of a bunch of foreign niggas. Coming in the mix of us, misdirecting us and misguiding us from what the fuck we supposed to have been fucking doing. You feel me? And it's not to say like, oh, like, you know, oh, man, you know, you can't fuck. Like, no, it ain't that. But, nigga, hey, we got to start taking the lead and the charge of what the fuck we got going over here. Every, damn, that all ideologies is almost some following shit. Even the whole Indian shit. Just to keep it G. Because a lot of people don't even understand that shit because they're all understanding of being Indian. It's the perception that we've been given by foreign motherfuckers pretending. So is it really Native real? Hey, is it really Native real? Native hey, you feel me? hey, the, the boule yeah. the boule is running our, our community, our nation. They're the ones that's talking to Congress. The boule, the ones that these universities the ones that's pushing people to take that jab. They're the ones that's speaking for black people, for us. Nah, these niggas on autopilot. Nah, man, these niggas on autopilot, stupid. Ain't yeah, nobody speaking for none of them. They all on autopilot. This social media shit, shit this social media just hit niggas and this social media shit hit niggas in the head and everybody is on it. It's like everybody is, is straight up individualistic. Like I was telling on the panel earlier, you know what I'm saying? 
I remember I grew, I'm an eighties baby. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in the eighties. You know what I'm saying? I remember when our people used to go to Herman Park, to 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 McGregor Park on the south side of Houston every freaking Saturday and Sunday. Everybody used to meet up in the neighborhood from whatever neighborhood. If you from South Park, where you from Herm Clark, where you from, you know what I'm saying? Everybody used to meet up at the park. The park used to be full with number of niggas. But guess what today? They dropped the crack epidemic. You know what I'm saying? When they dropped the crack epidemic, up. ever since then from that crack epidemic, oh, it ain't number of white folks skipping around the park now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Places where white folks wouldn't even step at. Now they're there. Same I thing with the, same thing with North Philly. North Philly was ninety percent black. Now it's more white people in North Philly than it is black people. Yeah. It's called basically uh uh gentrification. <laughs> uh oh, in, intimate domain. Where basically the city controls our all our properties into intimate domain. Yeah, you right right there. Yeah, yeah. I forgot all about that word. Well, fellas, I'm finna get off. I'm going back in the chat, and I appreciate you, truth, for bringing me up. You know what I'm saying? And What's um, up, peace to all y'all out there, man. Keep dropping that information, bro. You too, my brother. Man, Much respect, up, bro, man. Much respect. Yeah, yeah. Salute to the guy. Salute to the guy. Man, what's up, Beast Mo? What's going on? And you what's need to good, get your Beast foot Mo? off these people's neck, man. No, man. <laughs> oh man, true. You 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 didn't tackle so many different angles. And it was like like you you, you just pulled the Jesus move. You flipped the whole damn table over. <laughs> Right, we're we not playing this game no more. Yeah, we tired of this shit, man. Yeah, you see, you see, ain't none of them came up here to, to, to talk about the situation. Man, motherfucker gotta make that shit make sense to me, man. I mean, it gotta make sense. Hey, OHF, I ain't forget about you, bro. We're gonna get it. I had yeah. to do this one, though. Me and you, we, we definitely gonna get it. So don't worry about, about that, bro. I'm gonna talk to you after this live, that and me and you gonna get it thing. in tomorrow. You they say what? About the black theory thing, you know, they still mm -hmm. trying to misclassify us in 2021 mm. still with the, it's, I, I'm not saying exactly right, but it's basically, uh, they call it the, uh, the black theory or some shit like that, you know, where they're okay. trying to figure out where we came from, but you know, they know, you know, what's crazy. How could this shit ever been a theory? The shit is not that old. The story is not that old for that shit to ever be a theory, especially if y'all still moving through the same trade routes. So how could something ever be a motherfucking theory that wasn't that old? Like, so it should have never been a theory. It's always been a theory, man. You know, and it's crazy, man. This shit is madness that people be falling for that bullshit, man. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Uh, and and, and I, I, I mean, I don't know, man. It got to make sense to me, man. How is exactly. it that how is it that in 1890 they talking about white intruders, right? And they talking about the ones that are automatically being claimed as Indians, definitely white, and they being claimed by some type of blood quantum or adaptation. But the Negroes is the ones speaking all the Indian languages. On top of that, they tell you that the Creek Nation was majorly Negro, but when you look at it today, you would never be able to notice that. How did all these Negroes hey. change? Hey, true. And, 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 and if you look at, like, right around that time the, uh, that you're talking about, the uh, the uh, the Masonic temples was just starting to get built right here, too. And, 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 and the white Masonics ran the black masonics off they had to go back to england to get permission from the king from the queen excuse me to get a temple built here then the blacks was allowed to get one here and that's that <laughs> boule i keep talking about no that's that, that's backwards philly 
they had to get permission. That's why that's why more mean free white man. They was yeah, enslaved no, first. They they I'm just giving you the gym. I don't, bro, bro. All right, cool. All they Fuck they charters. England, Great Britain. All right, cool. We talking about before they charters, bro. This before bro, all that, man. A white here. man went. All right, cool. Let me let me hog tie you right quick. The, the, the nigga ran all this shit. The white man was the slave. They taught you this shit in reverse, bro. That was the so slaves you talking about. I know what you're talking about, my brother. All right, I'm cool. So we talking him. about before. Talking about in, in, in this country right here. When Who got free first? The niggas or the white second. folks? When the white masons was here in America, they was basically the Ku Klux Klan. They was burning everybody's shit up. The black masons came over or tried to form here. In a time period, you right. And they burnt them out, bro. And but I'm talking no about a different people. time period. Now let's talk about the time period when they the was under fist and cuff. Talking about. All right, cool. With ask truth to talk about when they was under fist and cuff. What? Well, what the fuck? Is, who the fuck said my people was up? What? <laughs> I said when the white people was under fist and cuffs. What and about how you yeah. get the term? How you get the term "free white man" in the black? Yeah, body. I mean, I mean, you know, it's well documented that uh, majority of uh, the European uh, indi- uh, work uh, labor market was uh, white slaves, white indentured, whatever the fuck you want to call it. And when you start getting into the actuality of the concept, they wasn't letting motherfuckers go in seven years. As a matter of fact, they was basically having to pass laws to tell them not only to let these people go after that, but also to stop fucking them up and beating their ass and shit. Uh, so, you know, it's well documented. But not only over here in Europe, you know, it's well documented that they was over in Africa being sent to slaves and shit by the millions. Between the same time period, they supposed to be bringing niggas here by the millions. That shit, you got to make it make sense to me. So not only is oh, you in mm-hmm. I always use slaving a large population of your own people over here in the Americas, but at least uh, two million of you went into slavery into North Africa. And at the same time, you was down in West Africa bringing slaves. Uh, you got to make it make sense to me. Hey, you hey, know, hey, 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 truth. Let me say this real quick. Uh, basically, the Arabs are the ones that basically enslaved the Africans first. The Arabs did. The Arabs should show the uh, no, no, you better go back on the hell. No, the, 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 the Africans show. invaded the Arabs. You, you, you keep saying the shit backwards. Abraham went to the, the went, went, went to the, the Arabs and taught I'm that game. Biblical, I'm not using I don't give a fuck what it is. We That's ain't got you, use Abraham. <laughs> I'm Bro, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I, I bring, first, man. I'm just telling you where they get their shit from. It come from Abraham. Ask any of them niggas. Abraham, it come from Abraham. People drop. I ain't talking about the, the All right, cool. Abraham, Abraham would be a symbolic version the, of Ray Ray. Pookie and Ray Ray. All right, cool. All right, cool. Pookie and Ray Ray. Abraham was the Pookie and Ray Ray to them fucking Muslims, bro. That's all I'm going to tell you. Now, 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 you could say it's biblical, whatever, whatever, whatever. The teaching was blended from Abraham, right? And and, and that came from 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 the teachings of the Bible. The Bible comes from the teachings of Kemetic, right? The Kemetic comes from the teachings of the ancestors, right? So they took what they wanted to take out of the teachings and taught us. That's why it's watered down, and and they used it to rule over us. You always right when you say that. I would never lie. But when you look into the teachings of it and take out how they use them to rule, you will understand a lot of that shit is facts. They was really hanging niggas on crosses. They was really doing these things that you see in the Bible. It's just that the, the, the characters in the Bible are fake. But you can replace their name with Sir Drop TV. They was killing everybody that was going against the grain the same way they do today. If you go hey, against me, the grain, <clears throat> you got it. You got it, bro. I wanted to just add to that little that little back end of that statement that you just made, sure drop, because I think this is a a, a, a far fetched misunderstanding. Uh 
when we actually use the Bible, right? We, 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 we're using names as people or as an individual. No. Each name represents what we know today as corporations. That boy dropped a gem on a nigga. That was fire. I already right. know, uh, I already what know, uh, OG Twitter, on, Philly, Philly Twitter on his thumbs right there. He's like, go ahead, bro, T- tell him. But yeah, that was a No, nah, it go wasn't ahead. a flyer. I was saying that's a bunch of gibbering. Gibbering. <laughs> that's what the fuck it was. If the shit is, you don't if, get if a B, no cross, bro. It's mythology, man. That's what that's mythology it. did to our head. It started as believing shit was real when it ain't real. No, look because you took mythology. it as real instead of, of a story look that was up really the word happening. Mythology, my brother. All right, let me let me tell you this. If if, if I watch uh Minister Society, right? That shit fake. All them characters are fake. They're acting, but it, right? They're all right, actors, right, they're they acting. Right, act. they're acting. Now listen, he go to gym though. It ain't they're no acting, gym. but do that shit really happen? Is the question. Yes, it does. So now <laughs> you want the answer is no, no, it doesn't. The media hype that shit up. Man, and you telling me niggas ain't getting robbed at the drive-through? That's why. Can I say something? Drop. That's why they made the movies to downplay how our neighborhoods is. That's they didn't downplay it a little movies. bit, but the I know niggas that got robbed the at the drive-through. Portray our too. neighborhood as fucking shooting grounds. I, I, make- I saw it happen, bro. Myself, I saw Minister Society happen in front of my eyes at least three of the scenes. At least three of them. The and I can go to boys in the hood. The I can go to boys with dude in the wheelchair. Hey, y'all. Hey, 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 hey. Can I get the mic for one second, y'all? You got it. Because this motherfucker gonna say, I dare you to show white slavery in America on live. Okay. Let me show you, my nigga. Uh, <laughs> let's show this nigga something, man. Like, man, look, bro. I ain't gonna pull up no Instagram meme or none of that shit. Nigga, I'm gonna go. Nigga, I sourced the fuck up. Nigga, stop playing with me, bro. All right. All right. Bound to serve. Indentured servitude in Colonial Virginia, 1624 through 1776. All right. At Lent, after a long tenuous voyage, the ship come in, in sight of land so that the promontories can be seen, which the people were so eager and anxious to see all creep from below on deck to see the land from afar. And they wept for joy and pray and sing, thanking and praising God. This sight of land makes the people on board the ship especially the sick and half dead alive again so that their hearts leap within them. They shout and rejoice and are content to bear the misery and patience and hope that they may soon reach land and safety. But at last, they were all ages, male, female, adult and child. The travelers of the trap, the traverse the Atlantic and ship such as Mary Gold, Southampton, Abigail and George, these are three ships. Robert Brown, age 25, in the Mary Gold, 1618. Rebecca Brown, age 24, Southampton. Elizabeth Poe, age 8, in the Abigail. Uh, Nicholas uh, Granger, age 15, in the George. They had one thing in common. All were servants. All chance to hear journey anywhere from five weeks to several months across the temper uh the temperamental atlantic armed with only the hope for a better future but at last conditions on the english merchantman bordered on the inhumane all right privacy disappear the human cargo fought for space competing against the common infestation of rats sickness fueled by fetid water uh, rancid food ra- uh, uh, ravaged the passengers. The combined odor of human waste, smoke, and blige water formed a prudent concoction that assailed the sense of all on board. That most people get sick is not surprising, wrote indentured, indentured serving uh, Galt Lee Middleburg in 1950. So 
why is this why is this white dude being called an indentured servant in 1750 in 1750 this is all this is his own letter from 1750 blood warm food is served only three times a week such meals can hardly be eaten on the account because so unclean the water which is served on the ships is often very black thick and full of worms the biscuits is filled with red worms and spider nests worm filled water spider infested biscuits seem vile enough yet conditions could and did get worse for some traveling to the new world consider the fate of the virginia merchant in 1649, the Virginia merchant filled with 350 men, women and children battled a two front war, the elements and famine. This ship lost its man, uh, main mess in a storm off the coast of off the coast of Cape Herateras and fought tempest for 11 days. Food ran low and men and women bartered over the main over the many rats that infested on the ship hall. So these motherfuckers was eating rats. Hmm. The captain put the weakest ashore on an uninhabited island. As death took his toll upon the stick, the living fed upon the dead. Damn, man. I ain't even going to Hey, go somebody that in the back chat, uh, Truth, my bad. This hey, shit Anna, is... if, you look up, if you look up Anthony Johnson, I believe that's his name. This nigga freed four, he had five slaves. He freed four of them, which was Caucasians, and he, and he kept one that was a nigga. Hey, hey Sir he Drip, hold on one second, Sir Drip. Hold on one second. <laughs> <laughs> Mute your mic up one second, Sir Drip. Um, so... I just showed the correspondent from an actual uh, indentured servant still being sent over here in the 1750s. What you got to say about that, bro? He ain't going to say nothing. Now look up Anthony Johnson. That'll yeah. give you a more modern uh, projection of white slaves. Now, he was a black man that had five slaves and four of them was Caucasian. So, uh, he, let the, he let the four go and kept the, the, the nigga as a slave. Once you look that up, you would understand that, yeah, yeah niggas was the first before. slave masters. They don't understand that part. Now, it's somewhere in between time we lost, we fumbled the ball. And that's where y'all come in at because y'all know all this knowledge. But we fumbled the ball. Somewhere in between when you said till now, we fumbled that bitch. And when we fumbled it, they kept our they they foot on our neck and and it is what it is. Hey drop. I'ma say this real quick. The Arabs are still enslaving Africans over there now. They ain't enslaving Americans though. And, and you know, I didn't say Americans. I said Africans, and I said Africans. Right, but we Americans, though. Why is your water so We hot? Americans. They I, they added the extra the African so, American. So they're they're European Americans, and we Americans. We're not African Americans. We are Americans, and they're European Americans. Once they tricked us into thinking that we weren't here first. That's where they fucked us over at, bro. They're European Americans. We yes, are sir. really the Americans, bro. Yes, sir. And then you got other niggas that and 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 an African to tell you you not need all. You're not African. They'll tell you, and you'll be like, Well, you just you we the same color. They'll be like, I don't give a fuck what we look like. We're raised different, born from a different region, and we never was over here until we came. Y'all been over here, and they tricked us into saying y'all go back over there, bitch. Y'all go back to Europe, nigga. We this our shit. Y'all didn't. So I got. A, I got a question for you, bro. So can you do me a favor? Can you provide me some sources, right, for this cover up? That sounds like a cover up, right? So okay. what I want you to do is in real time. <laughs> um, and we can we can listen. Here's all I would like y'all to do. I would like to revisit this actual discussion, right? I want to revisit this exact discussion. Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to provide me. Uh, 
Hold on, yeah, this that is gonna be that really that interesting. Out, bro. You guys will really that enjoy this, out. I promise. Yeah. So that here's what we're gonna do. I'm not sure yeah. if I interrupted yeah. you, but I'm gonna stop. Done. Are you, are you finished? Done. Okay, all right. So yeah. Go ahead. No, so what I, I want to follow up, right? Um, first I'm gonna respond to your, your um comment, um, truth. So no one is contesting the um indentured servant system, right? That's a system that existed well into the 18th century. Um, is well documented. Um, and what we have is we have we have all the documentation. We have what you read right there. Um, we can we it also existed in um, some places in um, the Bahamas and uh, the Caribbean. And some of those people actually remain slaves. The issue is we move forward with the, the issue is we move forward with a race based slave system in the states. Right, they move forward, uh, especially in the Carolinas. Uh, um, so, uh, so hold on, bro, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, gotta, you gotta hear me out, bro. You gotta hear me out. You gotta hear me out. Here's the difference with me. If I, st I be claiming I state, I can provide a real source, a real time, provide real legislation. I can provide. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Gotta hear me out. I can provide real legislation. Right. I can provide that European slave was outlawed. They moved away with it um, after the. Um, uh, Declaration of Independence. They move forward with African slaves. We can provide all that in real time. Here's the thing: I, I'm saying that you guys can't do, and none of you can do. None of you will be able to provide me sources that European slaves were the majority in the 19th century. That they did not move forward with a race-based system. Right? I'm seeing everybody say. I'm, I'm seeing everybody. Hold on, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta hear me out. Hear me out. Hold on, you gotta hear me out. Hold on, but hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we hear me out? Here's, here's how you respond to this, bro. His, hold on, y'all. Y'all can't, y'all can't interrupt. I'm, I'm, if I'm stating something, y'all. So here's what I want y'all to do. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Relax. So here's what I want y'all to do in real time. If, if this, we follow up with this discussion, you provide those sources, right, for all your claims that the European was the primary slave in the 19th century. I provide my sources. What I'm, what I'm challenging everybody, I'm saying your sources don't exist, right? 19th, 19th century, you do not have Europeans I being I the see. primary slaves. <laughs> they move forward with, <laughs> they move forward about, with Negro slaves. Right? So I'm talking about that. Hold on, stop. He, he added a... Uh, <laughs> no, man, hold on, bro. Let him hear you. I'm going to give it a I want to talk, bro. I'm going to give it to him, but I'm damn sure going to say what I'm about to say, bro. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead. He added the 1900. We're talking no, before 19th century, that's the 1800. All right, whatever, whatever it is. He put, a, he put an asterisk on it. When I'm saying there was white slaves, there's no way around that. You can put a time in what? And I can put a time in you. It's a feedback. So. Fuck the feedback. You heard what I said. What I'm saying is there was a time there was white slaves regardless of the time he gave us. Period. But go ahead, y'all okay. got it. So no, right. so this is jumping real quick. Hey, no, I was no, never no, contesting no, the time hey, period, bro. Hey, look, no, so hey, that's look. not. Hey, look, bro, I got to mute you up, man, because you was just long winded for like two minutes. I heard you babbling a lot of shit. I had to stop these brothers a couple of times to let you get that long winded shit out. I heard you loud and clear. You said in the eighteen, in the eighteen hundreds, in the nineteen centuries. Another thing you got to take into consideration is shit that the United States of America banned all uh, transportation of slaves across the water into America, that the only slaves that can be held in slaves was the slaves that was already in America already because they was on the coast of West Africa in the early 1800s, especially out the Revolutionary War, trying to find land to send niggas to. So, can you provide? Can you provide? I'm just gonna jump in real quick with a question. Can you provide sources, right? Sources, real sources. For all. My, my, my challenge is very easy. It's very easy for me to do what I'm doing. Right? So hold on, y'all gotta stop. Let me ask my question. Then y'all can, can jump in. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Are you saying relax? Everybody, everybody, relax. Just relax, y'all. Chill, chill. So what I'm stating is you can't provide sources. Or any slavery in reverse. Hold on. You can't provide any sources. None of you can. For any slavery in reverse. The mass number. 
we build you up. You said I can't provide sources. I'm going to provide sources, bro. You just study. Just because you saying we can't don't mean we can't, bro. First off, bro, there's heavy documentation of white motherfuckers not only being sent to slaves over here. You can't, America, listen, you got to hear me out, bro. You can't just, bro. You no, but you cut me off, bro. Hey, bro, you ain't going to over talk me on my own show, bro. No, but no, listen, hey, bro, you, bro, no, you hey, bro, you, hey, you not going to over talk me on my own show, bro. I'm going to stop, I'm gonna stop I'm you stop and I'm going to drop you to the back. I'm I'm fine with that, bro. But listen, uh, you gotta hear me bro. out. You so, can't so, you so, interrupt so, me bro, while I'm already saying my thing, bro. Relax, relax, no, though. Just you, relax. Look, no, bro, you relax, bro. You long winded as fuck. You come on here trying to <laughs> talk over. Hey, look, chill in the back till I'm done, bro. bro. I'm not finna keep you you the fuck. <laughs> talk <'cause that's> <laughs> right, bro. Not finna do that. I asked you to stop fucking over talking me. You want to keep talking. Now you can chill in the back until I'm done. You said we can't provide sources of slavery being done in reverse. I say we can't. I just put the one source that's showing you they bringing white motherfuckers over here as slaves, nigga. And I can bring another one. So just because you said we can't don't mean we can't. I just did. You don't want to accept it. And it was actual correspondent from a fucking indentured servant in the 1750s. Not to mention during the, heaven, the Haitian Revolution, 5,000 Polish motherfuckers sided with them and fought against the fucking French. Hmm. That was in the 1800s. So I'm going to bring you back up, man. Please don't be long-winded. Get straight to the fucking point. Ask your questions. But the next time you drop something, you're going to have to provide your source. We tired of you niggas coming up here asking us to provide source, show, and prove. And we do. And now it's all, oh, well, provide source and show and prove this. Like, now, nah, man, y'all going to have to start providing source and proving. We're not accepting no Twitter, no TikTok, no Facebook, no Instagram posts. Whatever the fuck they posting about, you need to come with the actual fucking source and show that shit in full context. That's a fact. So I'm going to bring you up. I'm not going to over talk you. I'm going to ask everybody on the panel to mute up, let you stay what you got to say, and please be vigilant and quick about that shit. Don't take five minutes to ask one question and don't try to ask 10 questions as if it's one question. We're going to deal with this shit one at a time. And if I got to provide shit, you going to have to show, show shit. So if you're not prepared to show, don't ask me to show. And we're not going to just yap back and forward about what the fuck we know. I'm ready to source the fuck up because I was about to end this shit. But nigga, I would spend an hour banging on you with the sources. So if you ready, don't ask me to show shit. If you're not prepared to show shit and be quick with your questions, I don't mind. And I'm going to stop being long with it. But I feel like I got to take my time to explain what the fuck I mean with what I'm saying right now. Nah, let's keep it respectful. Everybody on the panel, let this brother let this brother have the mic for one second, y'all. That's so rules of engagement already. Y'all get so worked hey, look, up. Bro. Hey, look, bro. We not going to deal with that. I'm going to bring you up. Let's get to it. We're not going to deal about all oh, you feel this way, you feel it. Fuck all that, nigga. I'm letting you up. Let's get to your contention. Ask your question, brother. Let's not get into the other shit or I will drop your ass back again. I ain't got time for this shit. I was supposed to end it this shit 30 minutes ago. So, ask your question, my brother. You got the yeah. right. Oh, yeah, you, you, you listen, bro. You, you, you listen, relax, relax, bro. Okay. All right. So, y'all get so worked up when I get on these things. It's crazy. So no, what I was stating is none of you are going to be able to provide sources. And I, I know I'm going to type off, I'm going to let you uh, follow through on that challenge of mass slavery in reverse by the Americans, right? You, none of you, are go, that's, it's something that does not exist. It's not a real thing. It's made up, right? Um, what you do have is the first chapter of the uh, slave trade being indentured servants and then not being race based. So he mentioned uh, Anthony Johnson, right? Uh, that was in the 17th century, right? As we move forward in the 19th century, it moves forward with an exclusively race based system. What I'm stating is none of you are gonna be able to provide any sources for white people being the primary slaves in the 19th century. And none of you are, are gonna be able to provide sources for there being this mass slavery in slavery, listen to the word slavery, in reverse into Africa, right? And then you won't be able to provide the crops that they were making, 
uh, what they were doing with the land where they were sent because it doesn't exist. It's something that's a soundbite that you guys all made up. All right. Um, that's my challenge. Hey, man, I'm very drive. comfortable with that. Hold on. I'm pretty comfortable with Andy Rogers being able to respond to that. Stop, drop. Let him get it out, bro. Let him get it out. And you got it next, bro. Please let him finish, man. Because this nigga. And on, on that note, listen, I'm going to let you guys just show it. All right. I'm going to back out. Nah, you good, bro. All right, cool. I'm, I'm going to give it right truth. there, too, nigga. I'm going to give it the truth because I ain't diverse in it. But I want to ask you can we find sources before the 19th century? And if we can, then we write, bro. You added a time period on this shit. We just talking about what was really going on before niggas became slaves. You put a time on it. All right, cool. So your time might be right. I'm not diverse in that. But I guarantee you I can pull up a source where there was white slaves and that niggas was controlling. I can pull up that. If you say I can't do that, then you're wrong. If you say 19th century, I might be wrong because I ain't really. Hey, drop, let me get it real quick. You got it. Uh, Sally Muller, The White Slave by Carol Wilson. A white skin is no security whatsoever. I should no more dare to send white children out to play alone, especially at night, than I should dare send them into a forest of tigers and hyenas. That's by Parker Pillsbury to William. Lloyd Garrison in 1853. That's what he wrote. And we all know who William Lloyd Garrison is. One day in the spring of 1843, Mr. Carl Rofe, a German immigrant, went into a cafe on, Le on Levy Street in New Orleans. The slave who served her looked familiar. So it wasn't the fact that it was a white slave. It was about the fact that this fucking slave looked familiar. And eventually, Madam Carl as she was known, realized that the woman was one of the com uh, compatriots, Solomon Muller. The two had last seen each other more than two decades earlier when both arrived in the city with several hundred other Germans. Muller's mother and infant brother had not survived the voyage. Her father and older brother died soon after arrival. Solomon and her sister, Dorothea, both under age six had never been seen or heard from again. Madam Carl questioned the slave who displayed no recollection of a previous life. She explained that she was the property of Louis Bell Monty, owner of the cafe. Madam Carl then took Muller to the home of Eve and Francis Schnuber, who had traveled on the same voyage. Mr. Schnuber was Muller's cousin and grandmother. The Schnubers also positively um, identified her as the missing girl known as Sally. With their help, she sued in court for her freedom, first losing, then winning on appeal to the Louisiana State Supreme Court. Muller's story was known to the 19th century Louisianas. In 1889, popular author George Washington Cable published Strange True Stories of Louisiana. It contained a piece entitled Solomon Muller, the White Slave, about a German girl who came to Louisiana as a child with her family and after being an orphan found herself in slave. That's just one, my G. There are two that I can go into to indulge in this uh, slavery of motherfucking white people well into not only the 1600s, the 1700s, but also the 1800s. So now that I provided one source showing about Sally Muller, which is also on the Lepre the which case is also on the Louisiana Supreme Court, dealing with her reclassification from Negro back to white, which they had to go to court about twice. That is documented evidence of it being done in the 1800s and then the fact of the matter the lady wasn't surprised about her being white she was more shocked that that she recognized her so i provided a source yeah, so once again the, the contest was not so like i said on, on my page i cover sally i cover this story right i had this page on my family at tori marie for history i cover the story when I, I'm not stating it's not going to be specific exceptions. What I'm stating is that the, uh, we move forward in the 19th century with an exclusively race-based system, right? So a lot of so actually people think the race relationships got better over time. They actually got worse. We move towards more strict laws 
in the 19th century. All right, so what's your, your, but this right here, obviously, it wound up being the case, which was not, which was not common for black folks. Black folks didn't have a court case to get their freedom, right? So obviously, this is an exception. What I'm stating is no such thing as slavery in reverse. You nobody's gonna be able to provide those sources, and it's also no such thing as this mass number of Europeans who are enslaved. You have the mixed race people that you often show um, from the Harper's Ferry. Um, weekly so, that y'all show so the quadrant so 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 slave so campaign so and y'all pretend like they're white slaves, they're not. Um, it's, it's absolutely, the problem is you have, you have an exception obviously that went to court, which shows that it was not the rule, it was the exception. Right? So the, the narrative that you're pushing is that white people were the slaves in the 19th century. And what I'm stating was after the Declaration of Independence, no, bro, we bro, moved bro. forward. We no, moved forward with a race-based system. No, bro, because as a matter of fact, man, don't unmute your mic. I'm gonna drop you to the back, my G. Right now, you ain't doing nothing but doing a bunch of word jogging right now, saying a bunch of shit, nigga. I just showed you a source that's on the goddamn Supreme Court, nigga. So I'm not pushing no narrative. All I'm Why is it on nigga, that it All right, man. Once again, bro. I told you don't mute your mic. I was going to drop you to the back. I'm not going to play that shit. You just jarbled off a bunch of nonsense and didn't say nothing, nigga. You said I couldn't mm -hmm. provide a source of white people mm -hmm. being enslaved in America in the 1800s. I showed you a specific source. On top Went of that, there. so it's like, I, I don't get it, bro. Like, <laughs> you're not going to just stay here and try to play like I just didn't show you that. Right, Ain't nobody right. playing no narrative. All we doing is presenting the motherfucking <laughs> evidence, bro. So, hey, what, are you, so what are you saying? What are you saying? So, let me, let me reply. Let me reply before anybody says anything. Why do you think it's, no one thinks it's ironic that this right here, which I cover, which everybody can see in real time, I've covered this story. But the interesting thing is, why is this a court case? Why is this a court case is my question. Obviously, it's not the rule, right? It's obviously no, an no. exception to the rule, is what no, I'm stating, no, right? No, it's no, obviously no. an exception to the rule. No, that's nobody, not, that's nobody's not, engaged that's in that conversation, not, right? Not, you'll find not, other. Not, listen, no, 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 no. Listen, we'll find, no, not, no, no. I, that's okay. not an exception because I also oh, told you about another Supreme Court's docket case, the very first one on the Louisiana docket, the very first one is dealing with the reclassification of a of an Indian into a fucking Negro, and they didn't want to be classified as that shit. And he was a black man. Right. Hey, oh, right, so, like, me, so like I said, on my, once again, hold on, hold on, hold on. The way that you posed your question, the way that you addressed your question, right? You said, can nobody find a source, right? That's that's the, that's how you talk about your question. No, that was, listen, I, I'm talking about a historic narrative that y'all push. This is something very simple. This is a historic narrative that everybody pushes. Okay, the white well, people okay, were the real slaves. Hold on, hold on, listen. Y'all gotta, gotta hear me out, y'all. Y'all gotta hear me out. That, that white, I, I've heard on this platform multiple times that white people right. were the ones that right. were freed in 1860, right? You hear that multiple times. Of obviously, course. this is not, this, obviously, this, sh this shows that that was not the case because this went to court, right? Uh, why did this go to court is the question, right? It's obviously the exception. What I'm stating is this is not the rule. White slavery is not the rule in the 19th century. We move forward with a race based system, and there's no such thing as mass slavery in reverse. There's no such thing. That's hey, a made-up concept. Now, now, what you're doing is brilliant. You you add in the 19th century, and then you add you add in mass slavery. We're talking about different white who all time And you saying it what? And once you say mass, like it was millions of white slaves, then of course you're gonna be right. But take the mass off, and then you know we right, bro. He just gave you a source. It wasn't Listen, massive. you have at the end at the at the end of the 19th century, you have so many quadrants that are that are free at the close of slavery. Some of them look white. So you oftentimes on your pages, you guys have pictures of the white propaganda campaign of 1860, right? Everybody Google white propaganda campaign or Harper's Ferry Weekly. It's on your pages. You're showing them as white slaves. They're not white slaves, they're quadrants. What I'm stating is they're pushing a false, you're pushing a false narrative. That white people were the slaves in the 19th century when that was totally, uh, totally untrue. And the same thing for this mass slavery in reverse. In it does not century. exist. But that's what you we came up saying, OHL. Ain't nobody said that. That's what you said. That was okay. Well, was listen. If, if nobody disagrees with that, then we all in agreement, right? That was your time that, that was your time. 
But what I'm saying is nobody's gonna be able to provide any sources for that, right? I don't agree with nothing. I, 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 I need everybody I to mute. I need everybody to. Brother. I need everybody to mute up. All right. He keeps saying right. He keeps saying we can't provide no sources. He say this shit on everybody channel he come through, and then we provide sources, and he still say, but he haven't pro provided shit. All he keeps saying is, oh, I I went over that on oh, my page already, nigga. We don't even fucking know you like that, bro. We just met you. <laughs> Page. Everything that we know about your ideology is you coming over here to fuck with us, nigga. I didn't even know you who the fuck you was until you start covering that bro deal. So no, we didn't see you go over that because if we just seen you going over that with that narrative, we'd have been destroyed this bullshit. So I'm gonna provide another source. Everybody mute the fuck up. I don't want to have to back up out of my source to to drop a motherfucker to the back when I'm done screen sharing. The mic is open and. I'm watching yeah, in the chats, bro. I'm watching in the chats. I'm I watching on. No, you ain't got to get off. Stay your ass right there, OHL. Stay right there, Brody. We don't want you to get off. All I want you to do is just mute your mic and be humble. That's it. Oh, man. Why you go? It ain't. I, I, why would you leave? Why would you leave? Why would you leave? You know the Come on, why the fuck would you leave? I'm about to show you another I'm, I'm a just, I'm a, I'm a hope that he was experiencing technical difficulty. But that's some bullshit if he did. Yeah, all I ask you to do is just mute <laughs> your damn mic, man. You damn, you you can't compose yourself that well to the, the point you can't mute your mic till I'm done screen sharing. Come on, bring your ass back up here, nigga. I, I don't even want to pull this shit up until you here. No, because I, I need you to see this shit up close in person. Come back up here, man. You know what? Fuck it, man. We gonna go on. But no, wait, 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 hold on, true. Hold on, hold on. Because you gotta understand something. When somebody poses a question to you, right? And then you also said source for source. You provided the first source. He right? ain't provided yeah. shit to debunk it. Okay, hey. so 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 that's what you're waiting on before you go into your next one. I know you nah, got fuck, a bad I, I, nah, I, I want to show this. I got to show this. I'm sorry. I appreciate okay, it. Bro. I understand what you're saying too, bro. But okay. no, bro. I'm going to show this. True, wait, true, 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 true. Wait. Y'all got to understand, man. We got a lot of hey, weird. Don't come over here with that shit you was on earlier, footwork, man. Shut your ass up. We ain't talking about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, y'all, uh, let me get this real quick, man. And then, but, true, before, after you, that, before you drop it, I want you to understand this truth. It's a lot of new weirdos coming in. These niggas is looking for information to make their channels big. Yo, yo, yeah, gotta hey, watch hey, the fuck you asking fact. for sources. That's a yeah. fact. Oh, my god, hey, look, after I pop out this last source, you're not going to be able to just say. Oh man, you know, we wiped the bam. I went over it, the, you know, and all that. He's still, you look, he's still gonna do it because you he don't need more information your, for his channel. Hold on, bro. You, if you don't agree with what I'm bringing, you gonna have to provide a source that debunk what the fuck I'm showing. If you don't have a source to debunk my shit, you either gonna have to accept it and let it the fuck go, because we don't want to hear shit that's going against it. If you're not ready to source the fuck up and show your source that debunk, not only the first one, which you didn't, you admit it's a it's, it's a legal fucking case, but you mm -hmm. gonna have to debunk this shit right here too. Mm -hmm. All right. So now with last that being freebie. said, everybody last mute freebie. up. <clears throat> this the last freebie, like bro said, the last motherfucking freebie. You gonna have to show your source to debunk this shit. All right. All right, this is uh the Organization of American Historians, the Oxford Journal, Oxford University Press. So we know what type of uh we know what type of scholarship work we're dealing with. It's coming up out of Oxford University, the slave trader, the white slave, and the political and the politics of the racial determination in the 1850s by Arthur Walter Johnson. All right. The slave trade, the white slaves, the politics of racial determination, 1850s. In January of 1857, Jane Morrison was sold in the slave market in New Orleans. The man who bought her was James White, a longtime New Orleans slave trader. 
who had recently sold his slave pen and bought land just up the river from New Orleans in Jefferson Parish, uh, Louisiana. Morrison apparently was to be one of his last specu uh, speculations as a trader or one of his first investments as a planner. Sometime shortly after her sale, however, Morrison ran away. By the time White saw her again in October 1857, they were in the courtroom in Jefferson Parish where Morrison had filed the lawsuit against him. Before it was settled, the law that suit would be considered by the three different juries, but be put before the Louisiana Supreme Court twice and leaving the lasting period of the complicated politics of race and slavery in the South of the 1850s. The reason for this stir would have been obvious to anyone who saw Morrison sitting in the courtroom that day. The 15-year-old girl who White claimed as a slave had blonde hair and blue eyes. Morrison began her petition to the third, third district court by asking the William Dennison, the Jefferson Parish jailer, by appointing her legal representation that she be subsequent in the parish prison to be to kept white from seizing her and selling her. So now you have another Supreme Court case dealing with a white person in the 1800s, in the 1857 to be exact about being a slave in the south and i'm gonna just stop right there but this whole that whole um that whole thesis ball forward by walter johnson is not only just dealing with the morris case he's dealing with countless of case by case that he ran across and even in his journal he wrote down that he couldn't bring forth them all because then we would have been here all day so he selected um certain few to present to us that had legal background evidence of it actually happening. And honestly, Louisiana was running rampant with white slave children that was being called Negroes, not to mention in Mississippi and Arkansas and Texas as well, too. There are legal documentation dealing with this shit. So I provided you the source and only went into one detail about one of the persons that he was speaking on, but he's speaking on multiple people and also stated that he ran across thousands of this fucking information and chose these people to go over out of the thousands that he ran across. So they all have court cases dealing with these people to verify that these was actual real people in real time in this time period and the chronology of it is dealing mainly with 1850 into 1865 into the civil war so okay are you ready for me to reply are you ready okay so yeah so ultimately the, the issue that we're talking about two things first off this right here is new orleans it's louisiana and within that system, you have something called the plissage. The plissage system is a system of literally whitening the population. So, so we have the plissage in place. We have a lot of quadroon slaves in this region of the country. This was a person they were trying to legally defend and represent as white. They were interpreted as white, right? Once again, you have a lot of these fair-skinned uh, children in Louisiana. Um, and the reason I, I'm saying this is because you have a, a lot of you have this picture of the Harper Ferry hey, Weekly. Hold, hold on, but hold on. You got to listen, listen, listen. So well, here's what everybody can do. I'm on my phone, but so you got to relax. So here's what everybody can do. Since they have access, if you're in front of a computer, you can put in Harper's Ferry Weekly, white propaganda campaign, and all the pictures that I'm re referencing, and he can do it right now. All the pictures that are all on your pages will pop up of all these white kids, right? Um, in, in, the, in the Deep South, a lot of them were already just freed, but they're using it as an abolition a technique, right? They're trying to stay saying the white slaves. They weren't technically white. They were technically mixed race children. That's one. If, if anybody heard me in the beginning, I, right, I, acknowledge, that. I acknowledge the fact that there were white slaves. I said something called the Red Legs. The Red Legs were, they were the remaining white slaves in the Caribbean, right? That's a, that's a very rare story. You have exceptional stories not common in the Americas, they moved forward exclusively with a race-based system, 
Okay, oh, so just, like I, I said, I the student, the, the person that you're referring to, the, the person that you're referring to is this is something called and a Harper's Ferry Weekly white propaganda campaign is a source, bro. Bring us up so bring listen, us up. If, if, this is not a planned debate. This is me contesting the fact that you will not find wait, that wait, narrative wait, wait, being pushed through history. history. And, and, and based on right. the fact that he's only he able to provide a specific source. That you provide, right? You, you come back with a source that you read, that you can provide. So I'm all, like I said, I'm on my right. phone. This hey, is, right. I'm hey, doing hey, the panel. Hey, if y'all want to have a formal hey, discussion no, about no, it, we can have it. If anybody looks at my comments, bro. Look, bro. I don't want to have to mute you, my brother. But you be too fucking long with it and not saying a bunch of shit, bro. You study no, study no. Hey, look, hey, look, bro. Hey, look, bro. You not finna over talk me on my own shit. I'll drop you. But you over talk me, bro. You over talk me. Hey, you cut me off. Man. man, look, first off, bro, this my show, and I don't even mean to play that role, but nigga, you too fucking long with it, and you ain't talking about really shit, bro. At the end of the day, you said we could show you no source of no white motherfuckers being in slavery, bro. I show you, you try to say, oh, that's a rare occasion. Then I show you more rare occasions and more rare occasions, and you don't want to admit the fact. The fact of the matter is the reason why the narrative ain't being pushed because the narrative has always been pushed that we was the fucking slaves, nigga. So, of course, they don't want to push that narrative. They don't even acknowledge the two million of them that went into slavery in North Africa between 1500s and the 1800s, even though the documentation is there. They went and bought a lot of them niggas out of slavery. So they won't never push that narrative about them being enslaved. Of course they won't. You don't want to deal with the fact that, nigga, it was a nice population of them that was enslaved as well. Not only in the mainlands of America, but also in the islands and in South America and in North Africa and the Ottoman Empire. So, I like, do you not just finna talk loud and over talk us and shit and not talk about nothing, man. I told your ass to source the fuck up if you wanted to bunk my shit. You ain't source up. All you want to do is just fucking talk and talk about go to your fucking Instagram page. Like, no, nah, nigga. If my shit wrong, show me why. If you can't do that, I don't want to hear that shit no more. But uh, we got another brother up here. Sorry about that, man. What's going on? Not a coincidence. How you doing, what's family? Good, bro? So, man, yo, what's good, um, bro? You got the mic, bro. So them two last examples I got, I want to tell you that they both in both of those cases, like the Sally Miller case, she got her freedom because she was white. You know that, right? It's so white people, it was against the law for white people to be enslaved. She came from Europe. Her father had yeah. a, a contract. He died, and her mother died when they got over there. And her, her brother. little sister. Listen, yeah. hold on. It was her and her little sister. So the guy, what he did was against the law. He kept them. They was little kids. He kept them. That's not an example of white slavery. That's an example of somebody breaking the law. And if, right. you, if you want the source, we can go to. No, I, 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 I mean, bro, that, all right. No, I don't so disagree. You, you, I, I, I don't history. disagree with you on that, bro. That the so story look, was right. that they all came from Germany, but once yes. they got off that boat, they were sold into slavery. No, so the no, thing no, was, no, no. Her yeah, died. bro. When she when they got to Louisiana and got to that farm, her parents died, bro. And you can I go know. to the wiki. Her mom, Listen, her mom and her little brother wiki. died on their way to the on, on the voyage. Yes. And her yes. brother and her brother and her father died in Louisiana. Her so mom her mom and her, her mom and her, yes. her, her mm-hmm. infant brother died on the voyage. They didn't even make it to the land. So I already know that. Fact. So but yeah, you're, not, yeah. you're not telling that to everybody though. So you're making it seem like oh, white people was being enslaved. Meanwhile, this her father signed a contract to, to come over here and work. But the thing is. My, he, didn't, my he, he, didn't, he didn't come to be enslaved. He came over here working I'm, because I, they I, was over there facing all type of family. Right, right. Fucked all right, let me ask you a question. So you're my perverting brother. the story. I, I, like I, I, let's, the de- let's, let's, deal, let's deal with this contract shit, right? Then didn't they state that all indentured servants that came, majority of them signed the contract, right, for labor, right, to fund a voice, right? Yeah. Okay, so what type of contract did our father sign? All right, I'm about to tell you. Hold on. Was it some type of labor contract? It's, it's called uh, a redemption or indentured. It's just called indentured agreement. And I'm gonna tell you that source. Okay, so what would her father? Need. What would her father? And what would her father, her mother, and all her siblings 
uh, what type, what would they be classified if they father bought them there based off of this form of contract? They would have, they were supposed, they should have been. They would have been. No, hey, hey, no, you good. All bro. right, so OHL, oh, hey, I'm, I'm dealing with bro, man. Hey, you got to mute your mic. I'll bring you up. This is me and bro talking. You, you, you know, you're going to have your time in a second. Me and him dealing with this subject. So please don't interject. Uh, back to what we were saying, bro. He signed an indenture contract, right? Yes, like a lot of them was doing at that time. Right. Okay. So are you aware that a lot of times, especially, you know, in the beginning stages up until, you know, the United States didn't start spreading out past them 13 colonies until after 1776. Right, but right? bro, we, we got to put this in time frame. We I know. That's what I'm saying. So we're going to do this to chronology, bro. I know. Yeah, we talking about 1850. Right, right. So, they so no, I, I, I ain't trying to take you. I ain't trying to take you there, bro. We ain't gonna. Right, let's go, just say we gonna, we gonna walk with it. We gonna walk by, with I, it, right? No, the reason I say that because I don't mean to cut you off, bro. But the reason I say no, nah, you good, 18, bro. 18, 18, 18, 18, We gotta keep it in context. White people cannot be enslaved by law. So I we agree. We can't go to. We can't go to no no else. We gotta stay at eighteen eighteen. So that's why what he did was illegal. So yeah, yeah. and it is it's an example right. of him breaking right. the law. But, but what I'm but what I'm saying is, bro, is that even though that was illegal, that was a common practice. And what I was trying to what I was trying to show you, I wasn't trying to take you away from the 18, you know, from the area that we in, right? With the law of the 18, eight, uh, the 1818. I agree with you on that. You feel me? Uh uh, actually, it was a law before that that banned all transport of any slave or indentured servant into the Americas that only people that was in yeah, the Americas it. already, only people on the, under, yeah. that, under that condition already can remain, uh, but they couldn't bring no new ones. So I'm in agreement. Yeah. but what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is this right here is that it was commonly well known that a lot of that shit, they, they was not following them laws. As a matter of fact, the reason why I, why, why I wanted to go there was because over the chronological state of dealing with indentured servant, what you see them is constantly have to pass new laws because they wasn't honoring the old laws when it came to indentured servant. They was going past the amount of duration that they supposed to bend in. They was also uh, they was also they was also bringing for grievances to keep them in basically virtual to the chattel slavery and not release them. So you got a chronological timeline of this shit continuing up. Up into the 1850s, into the 1860s. So, no, no, you don't, even you though it was this. illegal, it was commonly still practiced, and that was one of the biggest issues going on, especially in the Antebellum South. A lot of these court cases was dealing with this so, because they was illegally putting white people in motherfucking indentured servitude, another form of slavery, look, look. and classifying them as Negroes. Now, look, this is what I'm saying. They wasn't so. So a lot of those times, what they would say is, not, and I, I can see new articles, what they would say is, these white people have, now we're talking about the one drop rule. These white people, oh, their great grandmother is black. If you got any Negro blood, I can show you an article, a man came from Chicago. He seen a white girl in a slave. He's like, yo, what y'all doing? He said, nah, that's a Negro. He couldn't, he couldn't understand it. But they had mm -hmm. certain rules. You had to have Negro blood. It, it's rules to this. It's not just they just right. enslaving white people. You know what I'm saying? That's not how it was. Because well, that, like, but, right, and you're right, bro. It is rude to this shit, and I agree with you. But what was going on, and was was a big problem, and the reason why you're starting to see a lot of these cases come before the court, and then they end up passing another law dealing with that actual motherfucking topic. Is the fact is is that it was commonly ran rapid that a lot of them poor Eastern Europeans that was flooding the shores of America coming in to pick to Philadelphia into the Annabella South and also being trekked up into the Midwest and out into Texas and shit. They was motherfucking selling these people on contracts for not being able to afford their voyage up over here. So even though it was against the law, they was doing it. And they was lying about these people uh heritage to make sure that they kept them in that position. So I agree with you. It so was look, you just said the key word that though. Is they were still doing it. You said the key word, bro. You said they had to lie about their heritage. They had to lie and say yeah, they were black. But it was commonly so, so known white, that that so was look, going on. Yeah, because in Louisiana, you had a lot of mixing. You know what I'm saying? A, a whole lot of mixing. But right. you said the key word, bro. They had to lie about it. Because other than that, yeah. it wasn't legal. If they can go when they go to court and they can prove they was white, just like the, the other case you said, she was able to she, she was able to prove that she was white. 
the people, the mob, the reason that they turned it over, because they was like, yo, there's a mob of white people out here. We, they saying that we enslaving a white girl. We got to let her go. She right. passed for white. We don't even know what it is, but she passed for white because the owners just said it was, it was his word against her. The owner's saying, oh, no, she, she was born of a slave. She's saying, nah, I've always been white my whole life. Right. And she yeah, I agree proud. with you on that, bro. So, but, but what I'm saying, so I know you agree because I know you're not telling the whole story to everybody, though. You're just nah, I am, bro, because when you're not taking it into bro. consideration, bro, uh -huh. even though even though it was laws passed on that shit, at the same time, people were still doing this shit, though. There is, yeah. there is document. Hold bro, on, bro. I, hold on, bro. I listen to you. I my listen bad, to you, bro. Bad, Let me, bad, it's all bad, good. Bad, bad. I agree with you. They did pass laws against this shit, right? But what I'm saying is, even though them laws was in place, they didn't give a fuck. It was well known and common practice that these people were still doing this. And there are more than one correspondent dealing with this, not only on the legal aspect, but damn near it every fucking newspaper especially in the north this was the topic of discussion and they was afraid to send their children down uh to the south of their children being lied on and being snatched up in slavery because it was well known that these people was doing that they was fucking taking um uh, these european immigrants off these boats and lying and putting them in ditch of servitude, claiming that they had this part of Negro up in. That's why you had a bunch of white people being classified as Negro because they was lying and said they had Negro blood in them to keep them in Chateau slavery. So we don't disagree about the fact that it was a laws against this shit. I think the only understanding that we have a disagreement at, or well, I don't think you understand where I'm coming from, that even though it was laws against this, there is overwhelmingly documented evidence that people were still practicing this. And, the re and they were still doing it to the point that this was the topic of discussion amongst every newspaper carrier in the 1850s and the 1860s leading up into the Civil War and shit. So, and, and they still I, and doing that's, and that's yeah, well known to document it as well, too. So, right, so, 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 bro, so, what I did is I actually. Hold on, I, I bro. Let, 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 let me just finish. Let me, let me, let me just. Uh, yo, but this is what I'm going to say. I agree. Everything you said is right. And, and I'll give you an example. People drop drunk every day. Just because you have laws, that don't mean people are going to follow them. But in, in contrast to black slavery, it was the numbers is nowhere the same. That's all I'm going to say, though. All right. So what I did is um, because everybody keeps, for some reason, dismissing, um, I, I logged into my computer and I pulled some of those sources up. Um, and you so one references the, um, so white slavery is illegal in this country, right? So in 1662, it was illegal to have a slave who was born of a white mother, right? We have the law for that. I also wanted to show some of the, uh, the pictures um, of the white uh, slave um, propaganda campaign in 1861. So I'm not sure um, if you guys want to, these pictures are all over your pages. They're pretty uh, popular in your community. I, I think we should know what those pictures mean. Um, the law is, uh, it's a Latin name. It's called Partis, uh, let me read it, Partis, sequester ventrum and that law meant that you cannot um put a white child into slavery if they're born from a white mother they would have to be born from a negro mother mm -hmm. um, all right let me ask you a question why would they have to make that a law they made that a law in 1662 so it's i didn't ask you when i said why would they have to make that a law why would it have to be a law saying that you cannot enslave white children or motherfucking white children of a white mother? Why would that have to even the be made a was law? Already, it was all, always contested within this country. It was always okay. Contested. So, all right. So, with that being said, why are we it still why, opposed for themselves? All right. Why are we still finding indentured servant contracts? Uh, I think the latest uh, indentured servant contract correspondent that I found was, was actually two years. Before uh, the Declaration of Independence, I found. No, matter of fact, I found one afterwards. I found one in 1784, and I can show that. Uh, An no, indentured so, contract me, coming me, from Europe so with, gonna, with at least 30, at least 30 people on contract coming from Europe in 1784. No, so let me agree with you on this. So not only do we have that, we have some in the 18th century, 19th century as well. So it also existed in the 19th century as well. It was not very common. You have some instances of white slavery in the 19th century 
I've never, I never contested it. What I said uh, is that his so story. Who, who was the most people? Okay, so who was the most people flooding the American shores in the beginning of the 1800s? The, From the, the 1800s from the 1800s to the Civil War, what ethnic group, whether it be free or by motherfucking chain or whatever the fuck you want to call it, what ethnic group was flooding our shores the most, not only from the East Coast, but in the in the islands and in the uh in in the uh the, the antebellum south and the Gulf nations as well? All right, so I'm gonna break that into two parts. You have a so you have the first wave, which is English, Dutch. That's the, the wave that of slaveholders. And that's pretty much before the 1800s. Then you have something called the second migration into the country. And that is Irish, primarily Irish immigrants. And that's in the mid 19th century. So that's a different wave. The early so wave a, uh, encompassed indentured servants, what they were called involuntary right. and voluntary servants. So let me ask you this why, again. Why, why is it that majority of the writings about uh, European immigrants and shit is especially in uh from 1750s up until like damn near the 1850s is mostly talking about uh central and eastern europeans uh, a lot of germans a lot of polish you know uh as a matter of fact you had white people in 1784 calling themselves native americans because they wanted to distinguish themselves from the german uh immigrants that was flood not flooding the shores of america so Ooh. you're 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 <laughs> you even out a large population of uh, Europeans during these time periods that you're not even speaking about. I'm not even talking about the Irish. Them numbers ain't shit. I'm talking about all them Eastern and Central European mm -hmm. uh, immigrants that was flooding the Americas, especially mm -hmm. after the Napoleon, after the Seven Year War and after mm -hmm. the Napoleonic Wars. Our shores was getting flooded from 1800s until the all the way up into the Civil Ooh, War. About to get Eastern <laughs> and Central <laughs> Europeans and the documentation and stuff, and I can pull that shit up. So, yeah, so what my about response is going to be for the beast, though. It's going to be for you. Okay, this is my response is for you. So, okay. so what we have is we have something called the second migration. It is not slaves. It's the 19th okay. century. It is not slaves everybody can like once again everybody can fact check in real time that second migration is in the 1800s it is not okay. connected to the first migration it's, it's okay. after uh some significant things happen in ireland and you have this large migration into um the americas they're treated bad they're not the enslaved class by the okay. uh, after after the declaration of independence this country moved forward with race based slave system. And that's my main point. That was the main reason why I actually just joined. Um, I, oh, like I, thought, I've you, never, you I've it, never, hold on, hold on, right hold, there? On, hold on, bro, hold on, bro. You thought it just started right there? Guys, the reason why the zero, narratives that I, I saw are false and I, they're not supported not by the evidence. Hold on, bro, hold on, bro. You gotta hear me out. I'm, I'm gonna wrap this up. The one, the one narrative is that I'm there is just no making sure thing. that I hear you correctly no, because you so said bro, it was to, I can't to talk me. While you're talking, bro. I can't talk while you're talking. I don't talking. understand what you just but said. I can't brother. talk while you're talking, bro. You have the you have the mute, and then I'm going to give you thirty seconds, and I'll be done. Oh, so All you're right? not talking to so, me? Hold no. on, so bro, okay. so, I just want to be clear. You, I'll respond to you when, when I'm. <laughs> All right, you ready? Okay, you got okay. it. You got you to stop talking now. All right, slow motion. Using the whole train of thought. So, like I said, I you know, being on like, these short, short no buses no is, 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 is a little hot, talking, man. Listen, you got to stop talking. Man. It's a little right. hot. Okay, so what the I was saying was, is no, 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 bro. That, so you, you gonna let him just do that, right? Ain't no seat belts on this thing. We you require to wear Listen, bro, let, let me get my point out because we're wasting time with me, me talking to you talking. No, no, so you gotta just just hit the mute button, and then I'm, I'm gonna wrap it up 30 seconds and I'm done. Hey, All right, bro, two bro. simple bro. narratives, bro. Two simple narratives. Hey, wait till I'm finished, bro. wait till I'm finished, bro. Wait till I'm finished. About some shit and We're not arguing about it. It was, it was a challenge. All right, and the challenge was very simple. The challenge was that nobody, the, the historic narrative is that you know, they're pushing is that Europeans were the slaves at the close of slavery. Or, or during the majority of slavery, right? Because we have, we can contest that the indentures are actually that, documented. That the indentured docu the indentured servants are actually documented through history. Also, we have no record of mass slavery in reverse. There's no such thing that's supported by the evidence, is what I'm saying. So those were the Who two is things. The the reason Who why is I the we? Huh? Who is the we? We is that's just it doesn't I exist. Hear you. I hear so you, like I said, but who is the we? Here's the thing: if it doesn't, ex if it does exist, bro, what you do is you show it. Right, 
he did show two examples. He showed an example. There, there were there, there source examples. There were respectable okay. examples. I agree well, with him. Let me see. Yeah, um, what do you show? Listen, what the thing show? is, he actually can show sources. You're not going to show anything. You're just going to sit there. No, and go I'm looking at right, the he's screen, actually brother, you I'm said going to give me a so, hey, no, I, 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 so on that note, on that note, oh, no, I, 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 I think you, you, no, you have no point of you have no point of reference, but you're not going to show a source. I thought that's what we were doing. doing. We was, right, we was on just, that note, everybody. Sources, <laughs> right? Everybody that's what you called it, right? Sources. Y'all can talk shit about me now. Hey, hey, true. I thought was it the re or was it happening today anywhere in the world? Say that one more time, OG. Is slavery happening anywhere in the world today? Oh, yeah, Africa. Oh. oh, okay. Okay, and it's supposed to be illegal, right? Yeah. Thank you. So the point that God trying to make okay, is I'm still you back on. Hold it was illegal on. then. It's illegal I now. What you and they still with doing it. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. They still with doing it. I came to that conclusion already, man. <clears throat> we did that like 10 minutes ago. You got it, Phil? Y'all got it. I'm just listening. Right, and and, and one, one last thing, that this Native American party thing. Uh, that was exclusive European. That term Native American did not start to be in use until about the eight, 1960s. So it's a uh, actually, the first time it's that the connection. term Native American, uh, hold on. The first time that the term Native American was used in 1784, it was for the Anglo-Saxons up out of Britain to distinguish themselves from all the German immigrants that was flooding into the America shores, especially Philadelphia and uh uh, motherfucker, the reason why I know that because it's in one of Benjamin Franklin memoirs when he spoke on that uh, the, that the Anglo-Saxons would start calling themselves Native Americans to distinguish themselves from these German immigrants that was flooding the, uh, the shores of America. So uh, you, you know, know we agree, right? right? We the agree. First time that the was I'm referencing the party in the 1800s. You know we're agreeing, right? The party was the was the Whigs. They were the Wicks. That, that was another name for the Wicks. Yeah, yeah. So, for shit sure, show. Uh, I had no relationship you. to the Native American today, is what I'm saying. So we actually, we, we agree, bro. The Native American party was European, is what I'm saying. Okay. That's why okay. we always tell y'all, man, we ain't no motherfucking Native Americans and shit. Nigga, ain't nobody trying to be them. Nigga, Oop. you ain't gonna hear me out here screaming no hi ya 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 none of that goofy Oop. ass shit, nigga. The, the whole, the world, try, the whole is, world trying to be us. Oops. So I'm gonna be me. But the legal definition of Native American today is Indian, though. That's that's the problem, though. Uh, that's a modern term, though. Notice they always call them modern, modern, modern. You still trying to label us as men when we already told you it's God's only. I don't know if uh, the brother, uh, not a coincidence, want to. Uh, Want to tap back in? It's all good, Brody. I, I know you've been there quiet for a little minute. These are the ancestors. I mean, you know, I'm just sitting here. I'm so we don't here. have to go by what's about written about. down. Hold on, brother. Hold on. I've, I've given you your open mic, your open floor. <clears throat> look, look, look at what they wasn't prepared for. Right. Look at what they wasn't prepared for. Look. Oh, I'm just bullshit. Y'all go here, bro. I'm fucking with y'all. That's <laughs> funny as hell, man. I'm fucking with y'all. I'm so far in my. Yo, too. Yeah, you got it, bro. Did you ever think how that uh that thing you had going on with Sango, EBW Sango? Yeah, yeah. So you article, I'm still back. waiting to see the source. Okay, can, can I show my screen? Nah, I'm sure my screen. Hey, look, bro, you super loud, and the other brother was talking, man. I can't even hear him. You just came in loud as hell. Uh, so, 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 let, so, let, so, let, bro, what he got to say real quick. Oh, man, she's back. I was asking you to pull that article up that I put in the back chair. Working on ABW Shango. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you, brody. It's no problem. Oh, you got another article. 
Right? Oh man, I seen this article though. Yeah, yeah. So why yeah. you ain't tell me about this one? I did. I said you got two articles, one calling him an African and one calling him a Creek Indian. But when so, you start digging, when you start doing it, but 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 the thing so is, look, is when you start digging into his, his hold on, hold on, bro, hold on, bro. You got two <laughs> things going on. You got an article that's calling him a mixed Indian and African, right? I give you that one. Then you got the one I show that talk nothing about African whatsoever. So now I'm like, mm. you got one calling him a Creek Indian. He's holding a council membership, which only real Creek Indians can hold. Not no fucking freedmen or none of that shit. You can't hold no position on the council unless you're a real bloodline Creek Indian. But you got this one calling him an African. So I'm like, well, on. let me go. Uh, let me go into his genealogy then. So. Look, you, let me say what I'm gonna say, bro, it. because you're saying you a lot it, of messed up shit. So your article is from 1905. This one's from 1903, right? You can, if you look at both articles, you could tell that the 1905 one is paraphrasing from the 1903 one, because that's where it's getting the information from. You could tell. Now, as far as you saying that Africans can't get certain levels in the tribe, that's not true because. Right no, I said you can only get certain levels if you got the actual blood in you, bro. No, that's and that and I'm saying that's and it gotta true. be from the mother. Hold on, chill out, chill out. That's not true because in the Creek Treaty, it, it specifically said African descent is supposed to get every right that the uh, the Creek citizens get, every single right. Mm -hmm. So that's not true. Yeah. So I don't even know why you're pushing that, bro. All right, well, one, uh, uh that's what one that, that, I so, I, yes, so, okay. so, you told, so the truth is, in the Creek Nation, if you have African blood, you can be in there and be part of the nation and have certain titles and all that other shit. Why? Because they made a treaty with the United States state and that they had mm -hmm. to. And and mm -hmm. even in the treaty, it says how much money they had to give and all that other shit. So, we, we might as well just, we, well, as long as we can just say that Africans can be uh, tribal members, yeah, I'm done. You you done? All right. A guy didn't want to cut you out, bro, because you know, uh, <laughs> you say you want to get it out, so I'll let go you ahead, get go it out. All right. Well, I just want to keep can we just stay on top of it, though? Yeah, we gonna. I'm not gonna go nowhere. I'm gonna stay with what you just talked about. Let's deal with it. Let's deal with it. Trump. I, ain't, I, I ain't finna. I ain't one of them niggas. I ain't finna take you back to no 1500s and shit. We gonna talk about what you're talking about, bro. All right, one. Only bloodline creeks can hold council membership, especially back in those times. Now, shit done changed over course, and you can see where they done amended shit and amended shit and amended shit, just like we went over earlier. In 1890, majority all of the Creek Nation was a Negro descent. So when you look at your article and the one I pulled up and also dealing with the census, I'm like, OK, well, how do they know that he's of African royal bloodline if you know that he's of african royal bloodline that means that you have to know who the fuck this african royal blood came from and who did it came by way of so when you start doing the actual genealogy of agw sango you find everything about his mother his mother was of the canadian um was part of the uh the canadian canadian don't mean canada of today there was four different that was four different types of motherfucking creeks and shit and she came from that branch you feel me she was of a royal bloodline now when you start searching his father which the article you said that you got that you say uh says that the african royal bloodline came from you can't find no information about his father his mother, who's supposedly supposed to had uh came from Africa and shit, you don't find no information about them whatsoever. So, how is we gonna automatically sit here and say that this man got African royal blood if we can't even trace that bloodline back? There's no evidence on his father, there's no evidence on his mother, especially when it comes to genealogy. And then when I did try to dig in okay, the well, let me get hold on, hold on, because I, I ain't cut y'all off. Let me finish and I'm gonna and, and you got it. But when I ran into his genealogy, can't find no information about his father through the, through the newspaper archives, through birth certificates oh. and roping papers, land patents, and none of that shit. So then I'm like, all right, well, let me type in and see what somebody else say. Maybe they found what I didn't know. Everything is dealing with this man being African. It's all assumed 
because of the fact that he's a dark skinned person. But the fact of the matter is, why the fuck would a royal African who knows he's an African name the largest Negro bank? The bro. Greek Indian. Hold on, hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on. Let me get it out. I'm gonna ask you this question. Hold on. You got it right after me, bro. You got it right after me, bro. I swear. I'm gonna ask this question to you. If this man is of African blood, as y'all say, right? And he knows he's an African royal blood, as y'all say. Why would he name his bank the Creek Citizen Bank? And I don't want to hear that that he had to because he was Creek because that was bullshit. Because mm -hmm. I found I found oh, outside oh, niggas oh, in oh, Indian oh, territory. Oh, oh. I, I, I found outside niggas in Indian mm -hmm. territory mm -hmm. motherfucking make a uh, founding African Methodist Church. So he could have named his oh, bank oh, man, Afri real. African Royal Bank, but he chose to name his bank Creek Citizen. Creek Indian Citizen down. Bank would be his that. Was so he, was he a Creek why, citizen? Why would he do that, bro? Was he a Creek citizen? Because, because yeah, his mother was a Creek. Yes, was a hold creek on, hold on. Okay, then. So that's you asked he me that. He was a citizen. He's a citizen. He's a Creek citizen. Like you're, you're 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 making an issue out of nothing, bro. He's a Creek citizen. He can he, he can name it that, but that don't negate the fact that the newspaper article specifically said that he's from African royal blood. Now, so where did this African on, royal actually, blood look, come from? Hold on, bro. I ain't cut you off. I wanted to. You wouldn't even let me. So he's I from did. African royal blood. The newspaper don't say nothing about him being from Indian royal blood at all. You 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 making that up? So 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 the same paper. That you getting your information from, I'm getting from also. So, I so bro, how, hold on, hold on, bro. Hold on, bro. No, because I read that article verbatim from top to bottom, oh, every word to word, and we let's did not go. see African in that newspaper nah, article. Not, bro, bro, so, that. That, that your article is from so why would you say that I misread Nine, the article, listen, bro? You, I didn't say you misread anything. I never said that. I don't oh, my bad. I heard you. I never said that. No, I said we can read the article now from 1903. And then we can read the article from 1905, and you can see that it's paraphrasing from the 1903 one. The 1903 what, one says, and what did 2000.1 say? So, where did this African royal blood come from? If they know that he was of African royal blood, where do it come from? Why can't we find no information about where this African royal blood come from that they so suddenly know? Listen, brother, it doesn't matter if you can find it or not. The newspaper says it. That's the source. I'm not saying it. You but the to, newspaper you I got don't it. say that. They call him. They call him a Greek citizen of royal blood. In the one that I got, it don't say African royal blood. It, it, it say right he say it's he's a Greek. Right he's a Greek right Indian. Hold right on, right 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 You got to mute up for a second, bro. Oh, my bad. No, it's all good. That's what the All right, look, bro. Hold on. This is what I'm saying, right? The one that you say say he's of African royal blood. The one I got say he's a Creek Indian. Of royal blood with no African. So the thing is, when I start looking into the Creek Indian, I can find all the information. I can't find no information about this African royal blood. So how can you claim him to be of African royal blood if you got no information up on that? You well, got to you, have information to so, make those type of claims. So hold on. So basically, what you're saying is is that newspaper not credited because it's the same paper. So if no, that's what I'm saying I, is no, no, what no, I'm no, saying. No, no, that's no, that's no, not no, what no. I'm saying, bro. I'll let you get it out. I'll tell you what I'm saying. So then we might as well I'll tell you what I'm saying after you're done. It's the same right. paper, the same exact paper, just once from two years later. Right. So that's just it, bro. Right. This is what I'm saying, bro. I want to try. This is what I'm trying. To, this is what I'm trying to say, bro. You right. You got an article saying one thing. I got another article that's saying another thing. All right. You, from the same look, paper. And I, is well, go ahead, you go gotta ahead. let me. You gotta let me know what. You gotta let me know when you ready for me to let you know what I'm trying right. to say. You ask me what right. I'm trying to say. I'm trying to tell you. This yeah. is what I'm saying. We're talking about a time period where they was constantly throwing throwing uh, titles and labels up on us. To negate from who the fuck we really are. So we'd have had them title stones on us from outside sources plenty of fucking time. So the thing is, is what I'm saying is, is with that being said, it's like, okay, well, they saying he's Creek Indian royal blood and the one I got, this was no, no. African. Let me that. see I where can I, let me 
Let Hold me, on. It don't, let, let me, me read what yours says. Can I read what yours says? And then you can pull it up. You know what I'm saying? Because when it says anything about Roy Hunt, it's talking about his father. You, you read it wrong. It says, his father migrated from Alabama with Creek Indians to the place where the city of Muskogee now stands. He is of royal blood. We already know his father's African. Now you can go pull that paper up and you can read the I, same and, So and if we know that his father African, African, why, why there ain't talking, no information his on his father, father Brody? I just I gave you information on his father from the one. Who, from what is his father's name? What is his father's name? It don't matter. What's his mother's name? What you mean? We, how how, how, how do that not matter? See, name? this is see no, this it's don't matter because this is your paper. Oh, his mother's name is don't hold on. Look, bro, this is the thing. What you <laughs> it don't even matter. Saying, it don't even matter. Yo, you, uh, it do matter, my G. Because you got to be able to trace back. Let me see how it matters. I need to find this. Let me tell you. Hold on. No, man, I got to be small. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. I'm going to I'm finna tell you why it's matter. Because if you're claiming something, you got to be able to trace back that bloodline and that actual connection to those places. So when I trace back his creek shit, his mother shit, I can find names. I can find her mother name. I can find her sister. I can find his brothers. I can find his cousins and everybody. But you know who the fuck I can't find? I can't find his father. And I can't find that African grandmother that they say that he's supposed to have come from. So it does matter so that we can be able to, to verify. It does matter so that we can be able to verify the information that we put forth. I can't verify none of that African shit. I can verify all this Creek shit, though. So where's this African shit at? You can't call nobody no royal fucking African and you can't trace them back to an actual royalty of Africa. That's a fraudulent statement. So that's why it matters, bro. You gotta be able to. You gotta be able to back up that shit, and so you can't back up him? none of that African shit that's tied to him. What's and these people name? was throwing all type of labels and titles up on us. What's his mother's name? Uh, hold on, that ain't shit. I can pull that up with ease. You ain't said nothing but a word. I can tell you his mother's name with ease. Hold on, Bo. Let me pull this up. So. Um, so what I'll do, truth on my end, I'm gonna do some ethnographic research from his paternal line, and we can uh, see what we'll see what comes up. We can do some uh, follow up with it, because um, obviously he seemed like he was adopted within that tribe, based on what the man is saying. But I do have some sources. Everybody keeps saying I don't have sources, so I do want to share my sources before I leave. Just hold on, hold on. It ain't no, it ain't no motherfucking description about was he adopted or not. His mother was a fucking Creek Indian. Uh, I, mean, that was my inference. That was my inference from his statement. Like I said, I want to. Uh, okay, him. well, I'm letting it be known. It ain't. It ain't. I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, it ain't no motherfucking description. His his mother, his mother is a Creek Indian of the Canadian clan, bro. Like I said, I would like to follow up with the story. Damn, this story. Um, is but I do sick. have some sources um, for that. Uh, People who said don't have sources. I would love to share. Yeah, you ready? I share my screen. When you have, when you approve it, we can go with it. The sources are right up. The source of the bullshit. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, shit! Here's what here's what I would like y'all to do. I would like y'all to tell me y'all reliable sources, and then my challenge is we can not only we can not only we can not only your own sources, nigga. No, so I want to find y'all sources as well, so I can just bunk you with your own sources as well. That's right, my like challenge. how I did, you, like how I did you on Air TV shit that day. And you know you can do the same thing. I, I with the hey man, shout out to AP right now, my the my to the man. to the bro, my man. What's going on? No, none of y'all can show uh, slavery in reverse. None of y'all can. Nigga, no, I just showed you slavery. No, you, nigga. What you did you when you showed you can go play tennis with the other African stations over there. He was kidnapped and then got their rights through court. A white person was kidnapped and got their rights, which ultimately confirms my. See version. if they agree. <laughs> See if they really agree with your A sentence. white person who was kidnapped, right, and got their freedom through the courts. <laughs> that, that's what you talking about. I that's said go to the African no channel, contest. right? Because that, no that, that, that's, that's what we support, right? You definitely don't have sources. Okay. And I'm sharing okay. right now. Whenever so you the know. source is go speak with an African. Matter of fact, get in. in. A specific case. Right? He, might, he, might, he might give you some land or something. You, you never know. Now you're doing sound bites now, right? He so might he he might even he might even purchase your ticket. No, Nobody can do it. I mean, that's what happened, right? None of y'all can do it. 
And he's about one of the smartest of your whole tribe, and none of y'all can. What do. is Canada? I mean, I don't know. What 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 are you even saying, bro? Show. Everything you know. Hold on, hold on, bro. Do y'all mind? Do y'all mind if I uh get in? Yeah, you got it. Oh, there he is. Shalom, shalom. We got the the the, the big dog. He keep, hold on. He keep, uh -oh. he keep asking wait. for slavery I, in reverse, and I have come no the problem. Show. I have no problem showing that. If y'all ready to screen share, uh, show my screen. I'm ready whenever you guys are. My screen is already ready to share, though. So. Y'all ask me for sources. Uh, for so it just got real. It got real there. It was already real. It just, so I'm gonna go it to a couple sources. I'm I'm screen sharing now. I'm screen sharing now. If you don't mind muting yourself while I get through this, just ask the source. Hey, uh, true. Can you pull my screen up, bro? All right, yeah, my bad. I was um, I was I was doing um. I was doing motherfucking. Uh, I'm pulling up AG Sango shit so I could give uh, Brody his mother's name and shit. Uh, but there you go, Brody. You got it. All right, here we go. Boom. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into the book. Well, that's what I was gonna speak, bro. <laughs> hey, do you mind muting yourself while I speak, bro? All right, thank you. I'm playing games All right. though. All right, this is Don Jordan, uh, Michael Wash, White Cargo. I'm gonna go into the forgotten history of Britain's white slaves. In America, right? So I'm gonna go straight down. We're gonna get into the introduction, right? We'll get straight into the introduction. Uh, slavery they can have everywhere. It is a weed that grows in every soil. The man who is the property of another is a mere chattel. Thought he continued a uh, a man, our straddle and the and the, and, the, and the trustees of the government. So now let's get into the summary and the and the, and what's going on. In the summer of 2003, archaeologists excavated a 17th century uh, site outside of Indianapolis, Maryland, and they discovered the skeleton of a teenage boy. Examine showed that the boy had died sometime in the 1600s. He was about 16 years old and had tuberculosis. His skull showed evidence of fearful mouth infections and a herraneous disc and other injuries to his back were synonymous with years of hard tool. In this, in this case, tool means labor or slavery. Right? The youth was neither African nor Native American. He was Northern European, probably English, right? His remains were found in what is a now a cellar of the 17th century house in a hole under a pile of household waste. It was it was as if the boy was literally uh was it was it was it was as if the boy was of so little account that after he died, he was thrown out with the rubbish, right? Florence's anthrop anthropologists believe the young boy probably was the indentured service. The, uh, the deceptively mild label commonly used to describe hundreds of thousands of men and women and children shipped from Britain to the Americas in the Caribbean islands in about 150 years before the Boston Tea Party. Before I go on, uh, I'm gonna go on to my next source. White Yo, slave. Hold on, can I say something hold before you go? Hold on, just a second, brother. I'll let you get this one. I'm, I'm just gonna tell you hold on. Time, but go ahead. White slavery in America. David Barron Davis written a newspaper article, October 11, 1990, 38, 37 states. As late as the 14th, 15th century, continued shipments of whites. Some of the Christians followed the booming slave markets on the northern Black Sea coast from Italy. Spain, Egypt, and the Mediterranean islands from Barbados to the Virginia colonies showed few scrubs between reducing their less fortunate countrymen to a status little different from the chattel slaves. The prevalence of suffering of white slaves serves as indifferent service in the early modern period suggests that there were nothing inventable about the limited plantation slaveries of people of African origin. All right. So, um, that's just some simple source. We can get into the book and get into manifestos as so, well. You, you know, my page was already ready to share, bro. But I, I want to share something from White Cargo. You know, I don't know, shit. I just came on. Hold yeah, on. but no, listen. But I, my hold source on, is already on, ready. Before you and, I heard you, and I heard you, you asking would, a question would, about can anybody show slavery in reverse? And I showed it for you. That's nothing. You, you showed slavery. In that. No, you didn't. Um, so um, I'm ready to share my screen. You ready? Can you approve that? 
All right. I, I'm back. My bad, y'all. I, I, I was on the point. Hey, I'm going to let you share your screen, bro. But first, let me share something with the brother. Uh, not a coincidence. <laughs> so you got it right behind me, bro. You know what? You know what? You got it. Me, you know what? Me. One thing I, I like about not a coincidence, the brother is patient. And I'm going to be patient, too. You got it. I'm going to let y'all get it. I'll show the brother uh, where I want to show him next. Here you go. You got it. All right, man. So I, honestly, I want to show something from um from White Cargo to respond to him. But we can show this first. This is uh, um the white uh propaganda campaign. So this right here is on your page, Big Aboriginal, right? This is on your page, All right? So I want everybody to know the, the source, the origin. Um, this right here, these are not these are not white slaves. These are part of a, a campaign that was done in the Harper's Ferry Weekly. Um, and his campaign was to raise money for schools, right? Can I ask you something? These are quadroon children. I'm listening, bro. Hold Does on, it not I, say I also, that, I, just, hold just on. to reiterate, I, I pulled up two. I pulled up two sources. On, one of on. my sources was White Cargo. That's correct. And the second one was called They Were White and They Were Slaves. Uh, I use both of those sources, bro. Hey, uh, but now I just want to say something to the picture that he was showing because he didn't pull up a source. All he did was just went to Google and hit images. Uh, but no, it was that, a library uh, hold, on, hold on, hold on. But up under that image, though, it said <laughs> from, under that image, it said from the Library of Congress, <laughs> white slaves. So That's why correct. would the li- why, hold on, hold on, hold on. Why <laughs> would the Library of Congress put some fictitious shit in their archives and their records? But they didn't put it up there. They didn't put it up there. That's my. Right, like well, hold on, hold on, no, bro. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, bro. The problem I'm is what you're saying, the, prob- the problem is, bro. Is this right here? You went to Google and hit images, which is no problem. I'm not tripping on that. But the image that you had pulled up and you tried to switch it, and it still was in the Library of Congress, it didn't leave. It said the link to this picture was in the Library of Congress. <laughs> so, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. No, bro, hold on. God damn, bro. Article, Can you let me get it out? Oh, we, we, you know what? We go long on shit because instead of just letting me finish saying what I'm going to say, we keep interjecting, bro. Hey, look, bro. All I want to say is the link for that picture said the Library of Congress. It was from the New York Times and it had a docket number, uh, a DOI number to that actual motherfucking uh, photo in the newspaper that it came from Doc. Mm. And logged into the Library of Congress. So why would the Library of Congress? Why would the Library of Congress? Why would the library of Congress? Congress, listen. So we, hey, bro, let me get it out. Let me get it out. Hey, hold on. We trying to, we trying to screen share. We just let them get it out so we can move on, bro. You made a, you made a, you, you said it. You made a claim that you ain't seen yet, and let us get to it because I got. I debunked this on your page. I mean, no. The thing is, is this right here, brother? Is I can't even fucking get out three words with you trying to interject like you. All I'm saying is. All I'm asking is, is why the Library of Congress would dock it a picture of fucking white slave children and title it white slaves. Hey, let's go on these records. Let's give them a question. Let me reply. Hold 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 that means you got to be quiet, bro. That means he asked that question for me, bro. The question was for me, bro. The question was for me. The question was for me. So you ready? So you got to be quiet. Show my screen, bro. Show my screen so I can go show this guy a court document of white slaves. Tap the mute button, bro. Tap the mute button, bro. Tap the mute button. on my screen. It's true. I'm already sharing mine, bro. You ain't. No, no you drop your shit down. We don't see nothing, G. You now, drop now, 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 let's get to it. Let's get to it. You can go right after me, bro. Your screen went up. Get it right, ready, don't, though. Don't interrupt me when I talk, please. Let me share my screen. I won't. Just shut the hell up while I talk. Yeah, well, you shut the hell up while I talk, then. I ain't saying nothing. Just practice what you preach, bro. You don't do it. I ain't saying shit, but you still running your. Yes, you your did. Yes, yes, you did, bro. I'm quiet hey, now. I, Be hey, quiet when I talk. Shut the fuck up and let me speak. I give you the same respect. Just shut the fuck up. All right, let's get this work, nigga. In Massachusetts, Court of Assistants, who records date to 1633, we find the 1638. Ah, right, you still speaking? So make sure you know I'm gonna speak through your shit, so you know that. Description of white man, one gal's player. Of how being delivered up to slavery, right? Let's get into the next one. The Englishman William Edison. Edison, after observing white slaves in America in 1770s, wrote, "Generally speaking, the groan beneath the worst of the Egyptian bondage." 
right? Letters from the American London 9th and 1792. Government short of the Maryland colony compared the property interest of the planters and their white slaves with the estate of the English farmers consisting of the multitude of cattle. So listen, man, we can keep going on. I got, I, I can keep going on and on to your fucking head turn the cheese, nigga, of court documents of white slaves in a motherfucking America, G. There's nothing you can get around it, bro. It's over with, G. Okay, he can go. He can go. I just, want to prove, right I just want to prove right. him. <laughs> All right. Salute I want to, to I want to, uh, the I, want to, I want to show the brother uh, not a coincidence something because we were speaking on something, right? Okay. Uh, know. You know, I, like I was trying to tell the brother, he had an article that called him an African, and then we had another article that just called him a Creek Indian. And like I told him, the reason why it's important to be able to find, uh, to be able to trace that African royal blood, especially if they claim it in royal, it should be easy to trace. Is that a big ass problem of congenuine? Because they was reclassifying us, and that's why I said I can find no evidence of his father whatsoever so where the fuck is this african royal blood is really coming to so he asked me who his mother was and let me show you how this reclassification should start so i'm gonna go here here's ang sango's mother and first let me hit back so i can show it's really him this is the 19th census ag ag sango they dropped the w this time 32 birthplace indian territory same thing. They got him listed as black. All right. He's a landlord. All right. Now let's click on his mother, Phyllis Sango. Right. Now they got her listed as black as well. But everything after that, it got her as an Indian. When you trace her back, it got her as an Indian. And it's really tracing up back to McIntosh. So you got the Oklahoma Indian Territory, U.S. Land Allotment, Jack Mother Five Civilized Tribe, Phyllis, uh, Phyllis Sango, 1884, 1934. All right. You got the other U.S. Native American and Roman cars for the Civilized Tribes from 1898 to 1914. So all these times she's been listed as an Indian. But as soon as you go into the 1900s, they got her listed. As black, quick it though. As I want black. to be listed as Indian. You're not gonna show us one with they got a, Indian. This one right here. Man, all these motherfucking black revolutionaries in the historical time they try hey, to say Indian. Indian. And most of these right. motherfuckers be Indian. And I'm sure you over step by all step all the how she kept getting reclassified. This well, is a later one. Right? So... This is when this is five years before the one we just seen. This is when she was 80. And the tribal enrollment is the Canadian. So oh, let's go to okay. the next. What, and we're gonna go what, to the next. We'll walk no, through the Bible. Because if we look at the 1866 treaty, that don't, that don't tell us nothing. If we go on by the treaty, because we know Africans can be on the uh do tribal uh, membership. Uh, so I don't, you know what I'm saying? All right. This one got her listed as just a creek. Again, Africans can be creeks. All right, once again, bro, this is like, what I'm trying to show you is, bro, is this oh, right no, here, my bro. I, I want you to show me. All right. I, I don't understand how you ain't seeing it. By each year, she kept getting reclassified all the way up until she was black, my brother. She went from Crete to Freedman to Black in the course of 15 years. Bro, but we know Creek, being a Creek, uh, being Creek is not an ethnicity. It's a, it's a, it's a nationality. So anybody can be Creek. As long as so so what is an Indian then? Uh, Indian is Creek also because if we go by the 1866 treaty, they got to give people with African so shit, descent. A black, Af like, so on, African, bro. so hold on, so African, Asians, and whites, we just all Native Americans then, huh? If you, no, no, if you was enslaved by the Creeks before 1866, yeah, and it says it in the treaty, of course. I'm going by what the treaty says, bro. 
But the one at 18, but the one at 1850 had us just as a creek and it didn't have us as no slave. So, so, I, oh, show me that then. Show me that. I, I, I just see it. I, my bad. I didn't see it. Show me again. You could have just said that. That's what I'm saying. I, want, I just want to see something before 1866. Before 1866. Okay. Yeah. Let's get up. Because at that up. time, you had to be blood to be creek, right or wrong. Uh, actually, that shit was going on all the way up into the 1890s, bro. It was actually a big thing with the Department of Interior. Yeah, but again, bro, just because it's a law, that don't mean people break the law. They wasn't giving them their proper lands and money and all that. I know that. I understand that. That's I'm not going to dispute that, I, but I'm just right. saying, I'm, you get what I'm saying? If she, if she no, I get what you're saying, bro. If she was a straight I, I woman, you, you right. feel me? Right, and that's what I'm saying. Here it is. I see one that called her black in the 1900s. Five years before that, they call her a freeman. And then you go back 10 years from now, they just got her down as a creek. That's so so she's so been called three different racial classifications. She's been, she been called three race classifications in a matter of 25 years. Yeah, she but went from actually, creek. no. She, been she went from creek. No, she went from, creek. she nope. went from creek to a creek freeman. Nah. It did See, to just be black. abusing words, bro. Let me speak for a second. Y'all be abusing words because we already know by the 1866 treaty, you, you could be of African descent and be creek. You don't have to. So we know that. And then freedmen, if we go to the definition, that's that's somebody that's a Negro. That's another thing that's of African descent. So everything she's black the whole time because she's black. All right, let me ask you something. Negro is not African descent. Yes, it does. Uh, Y'all need to stop. Yes, it does. We know the fuck you know. African no, descent. Hold on. Prove yes, it, prove it. Pull it up. Pull up. Every definition confirms that, yo. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm tell you right now. Hold on. We can start at the 1828 dictionary. We can go to 1700 English dictionary. They all say of African descent. I put one in the chat from the 1700s. I let me ask you something. Let me ask you this right here. All those so-called African descent, weren't they all classified as freedmen? Yeah. All right. If, so if they, how did she go from? Well, so how did she go from straight creek to a freeman, then to black? If but she was a freeman, hold on. This is what I'm no, saying, listen. bro. If she was a freeman no, no, or no, African, explain, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, 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 bro, go, bro, go, bro. Go, go, go. Listen to you, bro. You gotta let me get this out. I'm quiet. If she was, if she was of African descent or a freeman from the jump. She would have been classified as a freeman from the jump. They didn't wait till 1866 to classify them as freemen. They was classifying them as freemen even before that shit. So she went from creek to freeman, then to not even a freeman to just black. How, oh, how does that happen? What and what when do you? Negro automatically allocate uh African descent? Every dictionary. Every, like, ever since they came up with the word, word. <laughs> ever since they came up with the word, it, it meant that, bro. I mean, now, I don't know why you say it doesn't. Ever since they came up with the word, it meant that. Hey, zoom that shit in, AP. Look, you see, I don't know what, look, a person who comes from Africa, like, I don't know what you mean. Negro, like, what are you talking about? And then, then it's African descent. Zoom in up a little bit more because we can't see that. Relate. Right, can I get some fire emojis in the chat? I see um, the word African on the screen. What is wrong with y'all? I, I, I see, I I see like a barbecue and going be, down real go quick. Any, so just then hold it'll be just more specific love, and they'll say so Saharan like Africa. To this. The the word Negro is above and it's the word what? African underneath. What are y'all what are y'all throwing them fire emojis for? When you're ready, let me share my two uh Two sources. He shared two. Let me share two sources. And I'm gonna wrap this up. I don't even know right. why y'all play these word games, man. Actually, actually, it says. Question was clear today. I don't know what you actually it says. Actually, it says black, black person, black or more, Negro nah. and Negro. Nah, it says African. Then, 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 then it gives you African. African. Then it gives. Uh, I'm about to read it because since y'all ain't reading it, y'all y'all dancing around. Let's be it. Adjective. A person. With dark skin who comes from Africa or whose ancestors come from Africa. That's the definition one and the adjective. Adjective so one, definition about? two. Relating to or characteristics of being a member of a traditional racial division of mankind having brown to black pigment and tightly curled hair. 
Find an old definition that does not have the word African in it. You, you have a hard time. All right. Let, I mean, that's it. But can I share my two sources oh. when you're ready, bro? Y'all got to stop saying Negro don't mean African. Find, find a 19th century dictionary. You'll, oh, you'll take you a long oh, time, bro. Take you a long oh, time. I promise oh, you. Gosh. All right. That's the context. Historic context matters. Uh, but with that in mind, do you mind if I share my screen? He shared it twice. Do you mind if I share mine? And then I'm going to wrap it up. Bro, I already shared your screen. Oh, okay, my bad. I didn't know. All right. Here we go. All right. So this right here is on your page right here, right? Big Ab Roger This is on your page. All right. So everybody go to his page to confirm the accuracy of it. He has something on his page um, called the Corpse Day of Freak. That man is a Corpse Day of Freak on his page. Um, this right here is a white propaganda campaign. I'm going to start from the second paragraph. Okay. Can everybody see it? Okay, um, instead of the coarse garment, I'm gonna just get right to it. So rather rather the pale skin, right here, rather the pale skin and smooth hair of the four children, Charles Augustus, Rebecca, and Rosa overturned a different set of northern expectations about the appearance of enslaved people in the South. That a person of African American heritage would always somehow be visible that only Negroes could be slaves. The caption beneath the group, like that, like the portrait itself, was meant to provoke armchair viewer unease, um, emancipated slaves, white and colored. It was no accident that the young white slaves resembled children of the magazine, uh, white middle class readership, which is to say Northern children were far removed from the threat of enslavement or so that the parents, or so their parents like to think. The sponsors of the group from the New Orleans anticipated precisely the kind of effect such children might have on the Northern middle class reader. So this is a propaganda campaign. That's why it's called a propaganda campaign to, to try to get their emotions, right? As the offsprings of white fathers, two or three generations, they are as white and as intelligent as docile as their own children. But these are products of mixed race heritage. All these, ch these children right here are quadroon slaves. They are products of mixed race. So their maternal side is African. All of these children right here. Uh, you mind if I share it twice? It was two things I wanted to share. He shared it twice. It's I want to share up, bro. That, that, that's why you study with to be over, too. You and I, it's still up. Right here. listen. Do you, you want me to keep reading? Both went through in the 1600s, they changed the law. So anything, anytime after that, if you did it, it was illegal. So yes, people break the law all the time. I don't know why we still going over this shit. All right. So but do you mind if I share my screen? Do you, do you mind if I share my screen? Your again, screen bro? is still up, bro. Why are you asking that? My okay. All right. So if I put something up, it'll come up. Hold on. I don't know how this works. Let me see. Here we go. Can y'all see this? I don't know if y'all can y'all see it. I got it. You got to um, update. I want to sh share something on white cargo real quick before I get off. So uh, hold on, hold on, bro. Okay. All right. Can you approve that? Can they see it? I see your screen still up, Brody, from what I see. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I'm going to read this last paragraph. This is white cargo. I'm going to pull it up in a second let everybody see it. So it goes to the Oxford definition of slavery. And it says, by this definition, white servants were the first slaves in America. And it is upon their labor and latter that of African American slaves that the nation was built. Tens of millions of white Americans are descended from such chattels. It is such a shame that few Americans claim these uh, largely forgotten men and women of the early frontier. So it's, it's clearly explained in the first chapter is European and then if you look very clearly, I'm going to read it again. It says, by the definition, servants were the white servants were the first slaves in America. And it is upon their labor and later that of the African-American slaves that this nation was built. 
So we moved into a race-based slave system is what I'm stating. This is from the book that he just consulted. Moment. Yo, we can't see the screen, fool. What's up with that? Y'all can't see it? I, I don't know. Hold on. Oh, shit. His shit dropped. Hold on. There you go. All right. Hold on. Let me do it again. So you it says, it. by this definition, white servants were the first slaves in America, and it is upon their labor and later that of African-American slaves that this nation was built. So we moved into a race-based slave system is what I'm stating. We don't, at the 19th century, you, you're doing away with European slavery. It's, it's, it moves more like, exclusively into a race-based caste system in the society. Um, and, and this book confirms it. This is one of the many examples in this book that confirms it. Um, I would have the, um, if we do an organized debate, I can go through this book multiple times and show how we're moving forward with the African, African. Let me get a chance, bro. Let me screen share too. You got it, Marjorie. All right. <laughs> um, and All right. Can I, I interject for a second? I also have a <laughs> ending, ending. That shows that European slave was slavery was illegal. Oh you know, like, shit! All right, I just want to say something one second to what was said it's as far awesome. as the as far as the Negro word and all that. See, a lot of this shit ain't being put into context. First and foremost, Negro mean brown skin and a dark pigmentation. Period. When it came to dealing with the Negroes or the Africans, they called them Negro de Guinea. When it came to dealing with the Negroes of America, they called them Negro de Terror. When it came to dealing with the Negroes and the, uh, the the islands over there by the Indian subcontinent, Australia and all of that shit over there, they called them Negritos. So every time that motherfucker, you get to a different geographic location, it has another pronunciation with just the word nig up in it. All it means is just melanated. But when you start getting to geographic location, they start breaking it down to let you know exactly what geographic location. During the 15 and 1600s, they was called it Africa's, Afra, or Negro de Guinea. In the Americas, they was calling them Negro de Terra or nigger. When it came to them Asian motherfuckers or the Afro-Asians, they was calling them Negritos. All I in the because I want I just want to piggyback on what you're saying before I go and crush what this boy uh OHF is saying real quick. I'm gonna just piggyback off of you. All right, so let's get straight into these motherfucking Jesuit letters, man. In 1524 in the Carolinian coast, people were said to be of dark color. Not much unlike the Ethiopian. The term Negroes and Indios was used interchangeably to describe the natives in the journals of the early missionaries who could not have possibly been referring to Africa. So let's get into it. In, in 1549 through 1565, the letters of the Jesuits uh, missionaries in Brazil usually addressed to colleagues in Portugal and Spain frequently refers to the Americans as Negroes. In April of 1549, Emmanuel D. Nabragua, the leader of the Jesuits, addresses the letter as a Baja Samoa, Ragres, and Libison, in which he refers to the Portuguese in Brazil as living in sin because of their uh, having many Negroes, right? And lots of children by uh, and lots of children by, they said, black women. Thus, a Jesuit father called the American women living with Portuguese men Negros. As term which, according to the latte, could not have been denoting to people of Africa. Because in 1549, there were few or no African women in Baja. Nonetheless, Bortegara used the word Indio when Africans are referred in the Jesuit's letters. They are always called Negroes de Guinea because of Guinea and to distinguish them Negroes de Terra, which of the land of America. So this is showing you distinguish, this distinguishing characteristics just to denote the fact that at this particular time, Spain would have been melanated as well. So not only has them been melanated, looking at other melanated here and looking at other melanated people here, they were able to create a term and they were able to distinguish these black people from other black people across the land. This is a Jesuit letter, man. This is easy facts. Before I move on to that, Let's go on. Let's get into these more records. Certainly, the enslaved whites themselves recognized their conditions with painful clarity. As one of the white men named Abraham, who accused of trying to escape a rebellion 
a white man, right? Try to start a rebellion, stated that his fellows were uh, were forced. Should we stay here and be slaves? In the statement smuggled out of the New World and published in London, white and bondage did not call themselves indigenous servants. In their writing, they referred to themselves as England's slaves and English merchants. In the Morseus River and Oxbridge foyer, English slavery in 1659. An eyewitness like Per Labrat, who visited the West Indies slave plantations of the 1700s, which were built in Maine by white slaves, labeled them white slaves and nothing else. Right. So this is all document government court records. And I can keep going on to your fucking heads, man, about white slaves in America. All right. So I have the letter pulled up that he's referencing. Right. It's this Verrazano letter. I have that letter pulled up on my screen right now. Um, if you want me to share my screen, I can share it and show everybody the full context of that letter. Um, it says some things that don't necessarily favor your position. Um, so if anybody's ready, I will share that screen um, and show everybody what that letter says. They're referencing a letter from 1526, I believe. And I have that quote, I have the letter, I can pull it up and show everybody. All right, so let me share my screen. And if you... Well, did you read it first? Huh? Did you read it? Did I read what, the letter? Yes. All right, so this right here, so what you were referencing, they were referencing, I have the quote, and this, and this right here is uh, Veranzano, um, this is his written record in 1524, all right, mm -hmm. in France. All right, so this is on his journey. He is um, uh, visiting. He's, he just came off the coast. Yeah. He's describing the indigenous. Big Power just read it to us. All right, you ready? So, yeah, let's read it. They are dark. They are dark in color, not unlike the Ethiopians, with thick black hair, not very long, tied behind their head in small till. As, as their physique, the men are well proportioned in height, taller than we are. They have broad chest, and he describes a physical uh, composition. He that also says, like and let's, let's keep going. Let's go to the last line. So, from what we could tell from observation, in the last two respects, they resemble the Orientals, particularly those in the farthest Sinorian regions. If you look up Sinorian, you'll often get a translation, which means Siberian. When they're referencing Oriental, they're referencing people of East Asia. They're referencing people of the Orient. Um, if you go a little farther down, he also gives another description. Um, uh, uh, actually, that tribe that he was talking about right there was actually uh, the Duhar tribe that he was talking about because they did run into a so-called uh, white tribe that the Vikings actually got a story about. That so yeah so and they was found uh, south of the Chesapeake Bay just like when the Vikings and their literature said that you will find these uh, people south of a bay. Uh, they south ran into they ran it they ran into this tribe as well down in the Carolinas and shit. This is this is uh, off the Carolina. This is the Carolina coast coastal tribe. Yeah, I know. Um, and uh, we also have him visiting New England as well. I'm sorry, this is a, a moment's notice. He provides a pretty colorful description of them as well. Um, so I'm just gonna yeah, say it was more fair and skin, which, which mean it was light skin, nigga. Uh, well, he also describes the hair as well. I mean, you can read it and, and see what he's stating. Um, it's not really hard to read what he's stating. I mean, I just gotta pull it up. Let's see. Yeah, we we read it already. So what does it say, bro? What does it say? Tell me what it says. It say you buy some bullshit, bro. Uh, <laughs> That's what it say. Because AP just read the content of the letter to no, you. No, no, this what, what and he, then you gonna pull up the same shit he just said. Right, hold on, hold on, pull up my shit again, bro. I don't know what the fuck you talking about. Let's get to it. Are you done? Because I, I don't want to stop. Did you did, did, did you catch the play, me, AP? I don't want to stop. Me. I, want, I want him to get what he got to say so I can. <laughs> For what? Yeah, cause what I, I, I ain't gonna lie, man. Like what I'm, show you, hey, I'm ready to end this shit because uh the brother Ab TV go lives in a minute, and we gonna carry this on over to Ab TV channel. But I'm gonna let them go and finish that, and let AP get what he got, and then I'm gonna shut this one down. This went a lot longer than what the fuck I expected this shit to be honest. Let him share screen. I gotta pull it up. Hey, righteous truth. And thank you for the sacrifice. Oh, here we go. This nigga said we look unlike the Ethiopians. 
but Ethiopian is in Africa. But uh, let's get to it, though. <laughs> this thing is slow. Hey, a very interesting letter. Let's get into it, man. Uh, uh, although probably edited by a Jesuit, this may represent the first letter written by Americans in a European language from Brazil. In it, they refer to the American leader, El Guerrero, as a Negro, and the other natives as Negroes. We find, for example, El Guerrero, who is a Negro, very uh, well known and feared among them. And that El Guerrero, El Negro, my grave, El Guerrero was, <clears throat> was at the same time an indie pagan and a friend of the Portuguese. In August 15 and 1552, no Bur Bergetta wrote the uh, Baja in South America and Libya, right? So that's what I just read. So let's get into the historical interpretation. Correct? But the history as recalls. Huh? Oh, yeah, these whitewash ass pictures, man. Right. Yeah, for a reason, bro. Yeah, they whitewash, man. They do it all the time, man. You got to know that. How right, they going to call somebody a Negro and then put white people up, nigga? You ain't catching the play? Dark uh, and then it says the history as it rec uh, recorded by their own white hands bear witness that the black people are the indigenous and first Americans, Americans stemming from the intercourse of uh, Vespucci and Columbus and with indigenous blacks from Central America, a.k.a. the Amaru. Mm -hmm. This is above the Malakis and describe the Negroes which stems back to the Carver, Algonquin. Right? Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. <laughs> keep going all the way down to the epigraphic, get into the, the, the Algonquin uh, language. We start breaking down different variations. Now, let, before I get to that, because that's a whole nother bill. Now, I'm really, I, I really want to go into fine detail about this. But uh, what I want to do is keep going, though. Like, so let's highlight this part. Mm hmm. Let's keep going. That's just say so, Arabic word. Like, come on, bro. That's just say Ar Algonquin Arabic word. Like, well, well, well. No, 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 I'm just saying. That's what you said. <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you this. <laughs> that shit is crazy. <laughs> uh, well, it's gonna be a good dinner tonight. <laughs> hey, so so <laughs> listen. When you, when you when it said Algonquin, and beside it, it's showing Arabic words. So what they doing is comparing it. To the Arabic language, right? They they comparing the, uh, the Arabic. They comparing they comparing the, the epigraphic. That's crazy. They, they, they comparing the epigraphic of the Algonquin dialect without the vowel system to Arabic, and which makes sense when you when you got the story in eight in eight hundred AD uh, uh, of these particular people coming from Africa, right? Uh, coming to the Americas. Meeting up with particular tribes that they claim was Algonquin and they had communication. These people would have spoke a form of Arabic language at the same time frame as well, brother. So, right, what so you I, I have I have the um the source pulled up. Uh, I I do apologize I couldn't pull it on the moment on moments notice, but I do have the source up. It doesn't look too good on, on your behalf, bro. Like if you actually read the source. Um, it really debunks what you state in terms of description. Hey, where did this source come from? Hey, hey, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we show, hold on. Before we show your source, bro, uh, where did you pull this source from? Is this the actual? Is this the actual literature documentation? Did you ask him that? Did you ask him that, bro? I know where he got that from because I seen that. Okay, so this is a fifteen twenty. This is a direct transcript. Okay. okay. All right, you good, bro? That's all I You good? What lyrical call it? The meat meat bus. All right, so let's read. Let's read. All right. <laughs> the meat meat bus. Let's ask everybody to mute their mics and be respectful. Can you do that? Everybody right, mute your mic. These people are beautiful. They have the most uh, civil customs um, we have found on the joy, joy, voyage. We are taller than we are, and they have and they have uh, bronze color. Some tending towards whiteness, others towards tawny. Uh, their face is clear cut. Their hair is long and black, and they they take great pains to decorate it. The eyes are black and alert. The, their manner is gentle, and very uh, very very like the manners of the ancients. I uh, shall not speak of your ma Majesty, and then he goes on. But the description is very very specific. Um, this sounds very much like the New England tribes that we have today. 
Um, he described they, their skin as tawny, leaning towards white. Tawny means tan um, and very clear cut face. Um, then he also describes them as having very long hair. Um, hair that, that, that defies gravity, right? Um, that's what we have. So this is not a physical description of the black Negroes, right? Our, our description will be much closer to the Negro de Guinea. You follow me? This does not sound like it's this is a total different depiction. And we also have some depictions to accompany this actual description as well. Um, and like I said, this does not describe a person that is black. This is the first encounter that he has in uh, New England. Um, and like I said, it's very clear that it's long black hair and tan skin leaning towards white. Um, we have multiple descriptions from Columbus. We have descriptions from uh, William Penn. All these descriptions are very much similar in who they describe and how they describe from Jefferson. We have hundreds of descriptions and they do not uh, support what you're claiming is what I'm stating. So, fortunately- What the fuck did that have to do with anything? So I'm repeat, uh, yeah, what the fuck? So, <laughs> so, what the that, fuck? so their skin color is bronze, leaning towards whiteness. What color is bronze? Bronze leaning, some tending towards white. Uh -oh, wait a minute. Towards question. Towards it was a question pose. Black people are not described as bronze. White people describe themselves as bronze. What color is bronze? Hold on, that's bullshit, bro. Because right now you bronze got a bunch a of hold on, hold on. That's bullshit, bro. Because right now, nigga, you got a bunch also, of Also, the hair All right. is long. That's bullshit, bro. Because right now you got a bunch of niggas that is claiming we are the people of the Bible based off the fact that they describe them as bronze. They describe Jesus as bronze, as a burnt bronze at that. So that's false, bro. Everybody know bronze is considered a motherfucking dark copper, my mm -hmm. nigga. So like, come on, stop it, slime. Like, I ain't never seen no white bronze. I want to show some more distinction. Oh, it's like, fair skin, bro. Why are you lying to yourself, man? Man, Why are you lying? Capping, you capping, the hair is long and black. I got it. Y'all know I got capping, it. You capping, bro. You capping, my dude. Please write the flame. Nigga, I'm screaming this time. I got a hundred more quotes. You show my screen. You show my screen one more time and I'm done. I'll let this. I'll let this. Yeah, we'll let this nigga go. This nigga capping. Hey, you got it, bro. That's bullshit. Cut, cut, cut. Desperate, but let's read this, though. I'm going to start okay. right here. White owners who cared little or nothing for the local white trash. In the course of an 1855 journey up to the Alabama ri River on the steamboat fashion, Frederick Law uh, Olmstead, the landscape architect who designed the New York Central Park, observed bales of cotton being thrown from the considerable height into a cargo ship hold. The man tossing the bales so what? Re uh, reckless into the hold of a hold where Negroes and a man in a hold were Irish. I must they inquired that that this mate on the on the ship. Oh, said the mate, the niggers are worth too much to be risked hurt. If the patties are knocked over and get their backs broke, nobody loses anything. Talking about the whites, right? That's uh, Frederick Law, Armistead, The Journey in the Seaboard. You can look up the whole context uh, reference. I'll label it right here and highlight. I'm going to read on. In the antebellum South, gangs of the Irish immigrants work ditching and draining plantations, building levees, and sometimes clearing land. Because of the danger and valuable Negro slave, prop slave property, George Templet Strong, a Whig partition diarist, considered Irish workmen at his home. To have had pencil pals rather than hands, he denounced the Celtic beast Irish youth were sometimes called Irish slaves and more frequently bound boys, commonly a joke in the South, right? So now let's get into it. All is showing you now. Let's, let's, let's read this. A few blacks fought on the side of the Americans during the revolutionary revolution including some Massachusetts Negroes known as the Bucks of America. The claim has long been made that the first victim of the uh, of the British in the American Revolution was a was was a black, Crespi, Attics, and the fact Attics was a Indian, Crispus Attics. In fact, Attics was an Indian in the descent of John Attics, and a Natick who had battled American pioneers in King Philip's War. 
So I just wanted to show y'all, man, these are talking about white slaves and they're talking about how Negroes is also, and it also should call him a black and a Negro who is also an Indian. So like I said, man, you's done, you's cooked, I'm done, I'm getting off. If we can go for sources on description for about an hour, bro, it wouldn't look good for you, I promise you. Uh, I promise hey, you. Look. You ain't hey. show nothing. Yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna lie. You, you, you ain't do nothing but a lot of jargon and talking, bro. But uh I showed a direct description from a letter that you did not like. So that's no, why I, I mean, no, bro. You tried to paint the narrative that bronze mean white, bro. I never know so no white person called bronze. bronze. White people right describe there. themselves as bronze, but no, even a lot. Hey, look, hey, 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 look, hey, on some G shit, <laughs> we can put all that Native American, African shit to the side and just dealing with straight skin color. My that's team. How we, that's how I cool. never okay. ever heard a white person being described as bronze, my nigga. And I dare any more. I, I doubt that even a pan African would admit to some. Why shit is everybody like ignoring that part? Why is everybody ignoring that part? A boy knowing what part? The part he said some are some are tending towards white. I mean, you never seen a real light skin nigga. No, you're not describing a real light skin nigga. Hold on, bro. Okay, so is it white? not ever? So is it not evidence of Negroes being classified as white and you're passing off as white? Skin here. Why are you ignoring it? Okay, well, I'm listen, not ignoring no bro. Listen, my God damn, was, my nigga, you can't ask me some shit and overtalk me, man. You gotta bro, let me fucking ask talk me too, bro. You doing something? Hey, hey, look, bro. Hey, I'm gonna drop. Hey, look, bro. I listen back and let you read all that shit. I just let A, you and AP go at it. You feel me? All I'm saying is, is my G is I, one. I, I there are approved. Negroes. Approve the change because he God, shared it five times. Man. Hey, look, bro. I'm not finna do that. Hey, look, like I was trying to say, but this nigga won't let me get two words out on my own fucking show, is there is documentation of niggas being classified as white and going into society as white to gain uh, upper status within the society. So it's not hard to see a real light-skinned nigga Especially when you have documentation of niggas being motherfucking classified as white and using it to get monetary gain within the system, nigga. That is a well-known fact. One fact that I never heard of is a white person ever being described as bronze. If that is ever the case, I would like to see that. But there is definitely evidence of niggas being reclassified as white and actually going into society as white to get better, better standing and status within this system. So it's not hard to see a light-skinned nigga. It's hard for a motherfucker to ever tell me that a white person was classified as bronze. I like to hear that. And I'll bring you back. It's fucked up, bro, that I got to drop you in the back just to fucking say something on my own show and I just let you ran on for a while, you and AP, bro. I let y'all get it. And nigga, you wouldn't let me get two sentences out, man? But I'm going to bring you back up, though. But nigga, you need to have some decor about yourself, bro. If I'm talking, man, don't fucking over talk me, man. Especially not on my own shit. Y'all got it, man. No, you you let him go, bro. That's what you did. You let him go. I let um, you go too. I was saying my screen is ready to be shared. He shared five or six times. No, nah, right? I told y'all, bro. This shit is dead, bro. Nigga, we pushing on five I'm fucking not, hours, I'm nigga. Not, I'm not. Look, 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 bro. Hey, 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 look, bro. Hey, look. We've been pushing on for five hours. I got an actual fucking life. Nigga I'm, finna, nigga, I'm, nigga, I'm gonna shut this shit the fuck down, nigga. Hey, look, my brother Ab TV is finna great to go live. Everybody, please go over to the brother Ab TV, and y'all, and you know, we gonna continue it from there. And I'm pretty sure, bro, gonna drop the link and let y'all up, and you can continue that shit from there. But I'm, I'm done sharing screens and shit, bro. That shit over with, my G. I'm not finna go on no more motherfucking hours, man. Nigga, I got a fucking life. Nigga, I've been stuck at this fucking screen for five hours. I was supposed to yeah, stop no, no, no. half hours. <laughs> Get out the box. Yeah, we went, over, we went over two and a half fucking hours fucking know, with this shit. Let me share my screen, and I'm talking. I didn't, I didn't share your screen every time you wanted to share your screen, bro. Every time you shared it. He, he shared it about two I didn't share, but I didn't share your screen every time you wanted to share your screen. It's your platform. I mean, um, look, bro, I told y'all, I told y'all, nigga, I was like, bro, I'm going to let y'all share this, and after that, that's over with. I shared yours, and I shared his, and then I shared yours again. So I gave you an extra go round, bro. It's pushing on five hours, like, man. Two two I'm two not, not, not going to continue this shit, bro. Ain't gotta explain it's that like, I don't know, bro. Maybe, nigga, hey, look, bro, maybe, nigga, you can be, 
going going at this shit five ten hours of the motherfucking day. Hey, look, bro, I got real shit I got to do, man. I don't waste it. All right, on that note, I, uh, it's five hours in. Bro. Follow up with this with the sources though. It's All five. Right. Hey, look, hey, but my brother at Ab TV, bro, he finna go live next. Now, I'm you not gonna go over that. there. You can go over there and catch some new hands, cause bro gonna beat you down too. So you could just go up over there. And and I want everybody from the show to go over there and he's support the boy and he's direct the one on one for a while, man. So he's not gonna do that. Um all so right, you, you okay. all know that's happen. Well, um, with that being said, though, man, on the we can do that. All right, yeah, that's all right, what's up, salute. with the that truth, being said, and man, but the truth. Yeah, with that being said, man, we about to uh wrap this motherfucker up, man. Hey, hey look, salute man. to all the guys and goddesses in the chat. Um all homage to the ancestors. Hey, true. Appreciate you, my brother. That's the way you do your business. <clears throat> Appreciate it, man. Gratitude, man. Shout out to the bro beast mode, man. Um, I'm gonna let everybody else get their spill in, man, before we go ahead and wrap this shit up. All right, I'm about to get out of here, man. I appreciate everybody, man. Shout out to everybody out here, man. Y'all know that's how y'all cook a pan fry. These crazy yeah. Africans out there cotton picking mine, thinking they can come get down with this information, man. Peace and love to everybody. They didn't peep the hammer when you came the through the door. <laughs> they didn't peep the hammer when you came through the door. They didn't even peep it. That's crazy. Yo. That's crazy. Yo, it was good talking with y'all, man. That's crazy. Stayed time, around man. for the barbecue. Was invited. Hold on one second, Beast Mode. Let uh, let not coincidence get out what he's trying to say real quick, bro. Nah, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, yo, yo, good talking with y'all. I'm going to catch you another time. You know what I mean? For sure, yeah. bro, man. I appreciate you coming up, yeah. man. Coming up in that chat, man. That's some real shit. Right, yeah, definitely. Y'all be safe, all y'all, man. All right. You too, family, most definitely, man. Much love to you, brother. All right. Peace. Peace. You got it, OHF, man. Go on here, man. You got to stop drinking the Red Bulls, bro. You got to tone down, man. <laughs> my, my bad. I ain't know I was still on you. So um, on that note, you got it, bro. everybody that follow up and look at these sources and look at these descriptions, they're really specific. Let's learn. Let's be honest about history. All right? So on that note, everybody be safe. I will follow up with this on my page. All right, we peace, man. Appreciate you for coming up. A thousand thirty minute videos. He gonna do a thousand thirty minute videos on his channel, not saying shit. Boy, get in the ring and have a real full debate, nigga. A lengthy debate. Can you go to rounds, boy? You in a shadow boxing, nigga. Truth scabbed you, and I just came through and put your ass in a microwave real quick. Cooked your ass. Yeah. Hey, right. right. that nigga. <laughs> Uh, we about to go to Ab TV uh, channel. Hold on one second, man. I'm gonna drop the link in the chat real quick, man, to the bro. Uh, let me let me see uh something real quick. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Hit that like button. Hit that it. like button. Hit that like button, y'all. Man, that's the brother Ab TV channel and shit. Uh, bro, about to ready to go live. Basically dealing with the same topic that I was dealing with today. And you know, man, anybody that got their contention or anything like that, man, go on here, slide up over there, and come tap in with the bro, man. Um, I'm gonna go on here and wrap this one up, man. This shit went a lot longer than what I expected, but it's all good though. Sometimes, man, you know, niggas just be happy. We gotta get it out. And with that being said, man, much love to everybody. I appreciate y'all. May y'all have a blessed day. Salute to the gods, salute to the goddesses, man. We're gonna get this shit in, man. You feel me? Much love, much appreciation, man. Y'all be safe out there, man. I appreciate y'all. Peace.